All right, good evening, Vine Sauce. I have a very special guest tonight, as you've probably heard by now. Everyone, welcome to the screen, uh, stream, Chris Hecker. The scream. The scream. Welcome to the scream. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully our sounds don't sound like a scream. Yeah, I'm clearly not nervous at all. Okay. Yeah, let me do this. Let me tweet this thing here. Sure. Uh, absolutely. Here, I'll put your I'll put your Twitter handle in there too. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yep. F O M A. Um. Do 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 do. I think that's everything. Live interview with K Y live by FOMA on VineSauce.com and Spar Party. There we go. It's, right. Look, it's, it's live marketing of an indie game right there. There we go. Awesome. So uh, everyone in the chat's very excited to have you. Everyone's saying, hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, so hi. I can't look at the twit. I can't look at the chat because the, it, on my best day, the chat on vinesauce.com blows my brain. So if I'm going <laughs> to actually try and have a conversation, there's no way. That's okay. So excellent. Uh, thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. Everyone's yeah, very totally. excited. Uh, so let's get the ball rolling then. Right now I have a picture of what's going to be the final art, uh, but we're going to play some of the prototype, the closed beta later on, some matches between Chris and I. Which looks very, very different from the mm -hmm. final art. <laughs> yeah, but still it works. It does its job and uh, it's a good thing so that you can focus completely on just making a really good in-depth game. Yeah, I mean the whole thought, the, 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 uh, there's B Blizzard, I, the, the, the development methodology I'm I'm using is basically completely stolen from uh, a guy named Rob Pardo who uh, gave a he's the you know VP of game design or whatever at Blizzard and he gave a talk in uh, like GDC or GDC Austin like hmm. while I was on Spore sometime in like 2006 2007 something like that right um, and he talked about there's a Gama Sutra article actually about it um, which I can find a link for if anyone cares I can put it in the blog post about this on SpyParty.com but um, basically where he was talking about Blizzard's methodology, which is this what he called depth first accessibility later, right. um, where you basically focus on getting the you know three hundred hour game, whatever that is for your game going um, way before you <laughs> worry about making it you know accessible to both people who might be less hardcore and you know even just UI accessible. So like as you can see, I don't know what you're showing right now, but on my stream I'm showing the incredibly terrible lobby UI. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean it's basically yeah, I can bring that up too. One second. It just needs it just needs to be functional, let alone, you know, the, the, the core, the, the key thing is to focus 100% on getting the gameplay as deep and replayable as possible, especially for like a kind of um, uh, a competitive multiplayer game like this. I mean, I sure. hesitate to use the word esports, depending on the fighting game <laughs> community. People. The fighting game community people hate the word esport, but then all the MOBA people love it, so who knows what the right thing. Competitive gaming, esports, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but basically it's this really intensely competitive multiplayer game. And so, you know, balance is everything there. So that's why, I like, you know, it's been in closed beta for a very long time. It'll hopefully mm -hmm. soon be open. And then I want to be in open beta for a really long time. People are like, when are you going to ship? I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah, uh, and I, I think it's kind of care. funny. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I mean, it's just like, shipping's not the important part. It's like balancing it to that, you know, three or 500 or 1,000 hour gameplay is, is what I am really interested in right now. Yeah, and it's kind of funny, too, because it seems like a lot of websites will always anticipate the following year for release. Like right yeah. now, Spy Party just got onto Destructoid's most anticipated 2013. I'm sure it was on a list for 2012 as well, and so funny that they keep assuming it'll be out next year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, there was uh, uh, one guy tweeted at me that he had put it on his, like, you know, small blogs, you know, uh, uh, most anticipated uh, game for 2013, and I was like, well... Open beta for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. There's no way it's shipping. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so on the long lines of depth first accessibility later, uh, I mean, this is obviously not a priority right now, but do you eventually, do you have any plans already in mind to, for the accessibility side of things? When yeah, the I mean, final there's, game ships. yeah, there's like I guess there's a couple different sides of accessibility, right? There's um, uh, there's accessibility of like you know making it so a newbie can pick up the game and actually not just get totally slaughtered, um, right? And have a good have a good experience, right? And so there's that aspect. Then there's actually like what is outside of games called accessibility. I actually you know there's a thing called Able Gamers, which is like you know they have like this checklist of things for like you know there's a significant number of people who are colorblind, you know people who have controller remapping problems, things like that. I want to do a bunch of that stuff, but yeah, for for the for the um, for just normal level accessibility, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff there I need to do, like a, a really good tutorial mm -hmm. um, because the game's so different. Um, I'm really hoping, I mean, my big fear about the open beta is the community. The community is so, I mean, as you know, you're a great member of the community right now. Oh, thank like you. The, yeah, the, um, and you, you know, mentoring and all of that stuff that makes the Spy Party community so welcoming to newbies for this really different, weird game. I just hope that, you know, 
um, survives the contact with the enemy in the sense of open beta. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, I was I mean? definitely going to touch on that later because open beta is right around the corner, isn't right. it? Right. I mean, ho hopefully this month. Uh, um, I mean, I'm famously terrible at, uh, at predicting my own timelines, but yeah, I mean, any, any, any moment now, hopefully. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so along those lines, um, we were just talking about accessibility. I like the asymmetrical kind of style of Spy Party. I wanted to talk a little bit about that because sure. I think that a lot of developers kind of get caught up in the idea that their game has to be symmetrical, has to be even ground on both sides. It has to be the same circumstances between two different players in a competitive setting. So what do you have to say about kind of designing something that's really asymmetrical? Yeah, I mean, the asymmetry is, is, I mean, I think part of the reason people mostly make symmetric games is because it's just way easier. I mean, if you balance one side, you've balanced both sides, right? Um, right. <laughs> and, and there's different levels of asymmetry. Like, I mean, StarCraft is asymmetric compared to other RTSs, but compared to Spy Party, it's not that asymmetric. I mean, Spy Party, you know, it's just a completely different game you're playing on either side, which makes it just really, really painful to balance. I mean, painful in a good way, painful in a lot of work way, but, like, the reward is that, like, you know, there's just very few games like that that are just right. kind of asymmetric. Yeah, and I mean, so, that's one of the things that uh, really drew me to Spy Party, that you have two very distinct roles. But the kind of interesting thing about that is that not only are you doing two different roles, but playing one role helps you play the other one better, despite being asymmetrical. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, I think that's really cool in the sense that um, a lot of people are wondering when uh, what's, what people in the forums have been calling specialization is going to happen, right? So, like, you know, right now you can't really, there's not enough players in right now. There's not enough, you know, of a um, competitive, uh, like, tournament type community, that kind of thing yet, because just because of numbers right now. There's mm -hmm. not enough of that to, uh, to specialize. You've got, there's one guy, um, uh, who refuses to play anything but sniper, and I think that's kind of cool. Like he's testing the <laughs> waters in terms of uh, um, it's the sign T guy. He's he 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 you know puts a, he comes into the lobby, puts his away message on, and says, "I will I'll, I'll I'm I'm here to play, but I'll only play sniper." Right. And uh, <laughs> that's cool. Somebody needs to be the first the first penguin to dive in to see if there's any sharks in the water. So um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I expect that kind of thing. I think that say at the really really elite level, I think that people will start specializing, but still have to play both for practice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that is, yeah, I think I think that's totally a, a, a an artifact of the asymmetry, where it's like um, you need to know what it's like from the other side. You need to know what the tells look like, and you you know, and the, the more subtle stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there are you're just going to be better at some, one side than the other. Like I enjoy playing spy slightly more than I enjoy. I like both of them, but I enjoy playing spy a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think that once there's enough, you know, once there's critical mass in the lobby, you could you'll be able to. Uh, um, You'll be able to do that, and that's kind of cool, right? Um, yeah, but the, the balance thing is the key. Like, it's just it's 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 it, like you know, right now, um, you know, there's basically considered. I haven't run the numbers in a little while, but like so the sniper has a little bit of an advantage right now. Yeah, it's and like so, uh, 55, 45, 60, 40, yeah, something like something that. Something like that, and I think that, like um, I think that's okay. In fact, I think that like basically we've talked about this a little bit in the forums, but I think basically the sniper is always going to have an advantage just because it's kind of like, it can be so reactionary to what the spy is doing. Like a spy yeah. will develop a, a, you know, the spy will develop a new strat and then the sniper will react to that strat. And yeah. then the spy will have to come up with something new. Whereas the sniper um, doesn't have to come up with as many original strats as the spy does. I mean, occasionally you do like right, right now there's a bug in one of the levels that uh, one of the uh, hardcore players uh, zero has found that like the AI's path around the big map, Mm -hmm. in a different way than most players do. And oh, and uh, Veranda, there. the plant thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we could show that. Um, we could go in there in practice mode sure. and, and show... I'll do that right now, that, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we could even just go play it right now. You want to see <laughs> that? So it's symmetric on both sides. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, what he's talking about right now is that th these plants that my character just walked around, uh, it's very easy for an AI to skirt around the edge, but it's very difficult for a player or a human to skirt around the edge of that plant. So you can actually, as a sniper, just sit and low light anyone who can get around that plant really well, just because it's so difficult, difficult as a spy. Yeah, um, it's like it's actually the two plants and Damon, the security guy who is wearing a Santa hat right now. You can when when you come right up to him, you go behind him instead of in front of him, which is the kind of thing that a spy would almost never do. Right. Uh, and so if you want to play a really boring game, just grind it out by sitting there in low light every single person. Here, do you want to invite me in? Since you're sure. aware, I can't invite you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, I could just do this. Hey, look. 
But yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, the guy who specializes in the sniper, how do you think he would fare if he did try spy at this point? I don't know. I haven't talked. Hello? Whoa. Uh -oh. Doing the spy, the sniper specialization? Okay, you um, cut out for a second, but I think you're good oh, now. Oh, okay. Are we okay now? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we're good. All right, go internet. Um, yeah, I haven't talked to him since he started doing the specialization thing, so we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, the numbers are what the key, the, the important thing in the sense of, like, I, it'll, it'll be interesting to see once people specialize what their ratings are versus spies versus snipers and how, you know. I want to be able to track, eventually, I want to be able to track individuals. Right. Um, you know, so like this person versus these five other people, and I've actually run some of those numbers in the in the in the um, in the forums before. Like you know, the, here's the top of the leaderboard versus each other, right? Because right now the stats don't uh, separate that out when you just look at the leaderboards. Mm -hmm. But um, the uh, um, what I want to do eventually is make an API so there's like a you know a restful like internet you know web web style API so that anybody can take the all the games and grind all the numbers themselves. Right. Yeah. Um, that would be I, fantastic. Super cool. Yeah. And so, it would just learn a lot for the sake of metagaming too, because yeah, totally. you would kind of those statistics in themselves will give you a lot more of an idea of things to look for on each individual map as a sniper or things that you need to improve upon or really I guess bolster as a spy. Right, I mean, what I want to do eventually, as soon as the beta is open, the next big feature is spectation and replays. And so I want to basically, I want replays to archive every single game and have a website, you know, uh, uh, devoted to like being able to index these and go through and just watch any one, you know, download or watch it on online if I can do it. You know, just any individual thing. So that doesn't, so it doesn't require someone to be streaming to be able to watch their games, mm -hmm. which will be really interesting because right now there's a little, there's a tournament going on. If you look at spyparty.com, you know, there's a, um, there's a tournament that's in the semifinals now. Yeah. And, uh, and one of the guys who's watching the stream right now, Blood Wolf, has not uploaded on purpose any of his games from the tournament and is not going to until it's over. <laughs> so don't anyone to study his moves. So yeah, it's really interesting, interesting to see what the replay database does to that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of funny too. I mean, uh, we'll get more deeply into the community aspect later, but it's funny that we're so willing to discuss strategies for the sake of getting... I guess bolstering the metagame and getting everyone on an equal level, even though there are other games where people wouldn't discuss their strategies very, very, I guess, I don't want to say religiously, but they guard their strategies because they know that if their opponent knew those strategies, then all of a sudden their game would be done. So right, in totally. that regard, I guess adaptability is extremely coveted in Spy Party. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think right now a lot of that is just the goodwill of everyone knows that it's a really early game. So if there was a degenerate strategy that developed, it could ruin the game, right? And so people are mm -hmm. really willing to share and like, you know, hey, there's a bug about this. Don't do this until, you know, it's time to, uh, until it's time to, you know, until he's fixed it or something like that. Um, and just as people being cool, I think that that is going to have to, um, that'll change over time. But hopefully a lot of that will be preserved, at least in the early days of the, uh, of the, of the open beta. And just people being cool and realizing that, hey, it's, it, it, you know, you winning a few games is not as important as making sure the game is balanced so that the, it's, it, it lasts longer. Yes, yes, exactly. And it really, if I think if everyone got into that kind of uh, mindset, I think the metagame would just also get stale in general. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's another reason there's good crossover between spies and snipers. Um, you know, if you develop a strat as a spy you're going to start looking for that strat as a sniper and people might pick it up. Because, I mean, you're watching the other player. As soon as they look at the log, especially with replays, they'll be able to see what you were doing. Oh, yeah. They might not know the in exact intent of what you're doing, but, you know, they'll be able to start, you know, start to... The information flow will happen. That's why I want to get the replay database up and stuff because you want that kind of information flow to happen. Right. So, uh, so you want it to be a skill-based thing, not necessarily, uh, you know, pure hidden knowledge, mm -hmm. especially with, with exploits and things like that. Yeah, totally. And I was going to say, sometimes you can kind of get the intentions based on the replay. Because of, uh, like, for example, if you see that they did a statue within the first, you know, 10 seconds, then you know, okay, this guy kind of likes to rush swap. Right, exactly. Yeah, I was just doing some practice games earlier against uh, Sulseam, and he was, I was basically doing the most terrible, I mean, I'm, I'm really out of practice, I haven't played, you're going to annihilate me. But he <laughs> was, was doing, I was doing the most terrible rushes. I was like, what am I doing? I'm total, a total noob. And the thing is, I could have went back and viewed those videos and kind of gotten the idea of what to look for tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Zero is uh, always, Zero being the kind of resident archivist of Spy Party is, is constantly watching and then even wrote up that forum thread about like an analysis of a few of my games, which I thought was mm -hmm. kind of fun. All right, well, let's play a couple rounds just so we can get some action so the people here right. who have no idea what Spy Party even is yet can kind of see how the game plays. Uh, uh, okay, so you are going to play Spy on mm -hmm. veranda um do you want to mute or should we just go and not worry about it Up i think to we you. just 
I mean, go. I don't mind. I mean, I'm not very good at talking during the game. The game consumes my brain, but uh, <laughs> but I'm not gonna. It's it's. I don't even know how to mute uh, uh, Skype, so let's just go for it. Ready? Yeah, we we could also just mute mics, but yeah, let's just keep it on so we can you know trash talk and stuff. Okay, cool. Here we go. Oh, I gotta get rid of that overlay. There we go. This map is so huge. Yeah, this map is huge. It's kind of like there's two maps. Well, I'm I'll leave the interview part for after yeah. <laughs> after the match. So. Alright, so I'm gonna talk out loud anyway. So we got two, three, three on the statues. I'm memorizing statues here, and we got one, three, two. All right. All right. So All right. I've already completed four missions, so we're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, for the guys who don't know what Spy Party is, I'm trying to complete some objectives, which you can see in the upper left. And in order to do that, I need to blend in and act like an AI while Checker, or sorry, or Chris on the other yeah, side of things way. is uh, trying to figure out who it is. Uh, and you might tell them they can, they can check out uh, my stream for the other side. So if they want to see what it looks like on the sniper side right now. Yes. It's just twitch.tv slash spy party. Yep, exactly. All right, somebody over there is, really likes statues. So he gets a highlight. <laughs> I tend to my 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 big sniper weakness is tunnel vision. Yeah, I tend to focus on the one person too. Long. That was a big problem for me very early on. I think that's just natural okay, wait, wait, hold, too. Hold on a second. One one thousand. All right, you're dead. Is that so? <laughs> oh no! So what did he do that made did you, you think? Add, you, I did add time, but I, it was the wrong guy. Damn, he was. See, I like tunnel vision. Okay, so what happened was he uh, went to the statues multiple times. Uh huh. Right in the very beginning, he he spawned near a statue and went right from that to another statue. And then he went and checked his watch. And then I counted. It got. It was a green action test. On, yeah, yeah. So I counted on the time, but it must have. I I got him too. Yeah, too late. Oh, bummer, because like this, the 45 seconds was almost over when I shot him, too. And the thing <laughs> is, I can use that to my advantage, too, because if I know that tunnel vision is your weakness, I can just punish for that. Because yeah, I, exactly. I could just sit around for you know a minute while the AI does whatever. Wait get, yeah, wait till I get a, uh, wait get till a couple I get suspects. A, um, a suspect. Yeah, and it's funny how the metagame changes with voice chat going, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I could, I could easily just bluff or even double bluff. I could tell you exactly what I'm doing, and you could think that that's not what I'm doing and decide to ignore me. Yeah, there's a couple guys, Zero and Viri, like the good players who play and they actually leave TeamSpeak on and just trash talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what should we do here? What's your favorite map? To snipe um, on? My favorite map to snipe on? Probably Courtyard. One of the Courtyards. Courtyard 2. But, okay. uh, but yeah, I am reading the, ch the chat, guys. I will take some questions on the fly if they're really good, but for the most part, I'm going to stick to the questions that you guys asked in the thread. All right, what are we playing here? Any three or four or any three or four or five? Um, up to you, your call. Um, we'll do three or four. Be okay. quick. So All he right. needs to swap something, which kind of leads to these uh, mission select mind games going on. Yeah, yeah, so now I need to drop something. So there's five total missions available, and I'm going to drop one of these missions. Um, and so seduce target has no hard tells so that's a good one to drop because it takes a lot of time and it forces you to uh use brain power cognitive load on all the other missions mm -hmm. um, so let's do that yeah it's kind of funny because watching the tournament a lot of people struck swap and mic and microfilm but i didn't quite get that logic because you only needed to complete three missions in the tournament setup right so if they struck both of the most mentally taxing things, doesn't that make it a bit easier for Sniper? I thought they would have at yeah. least left one of those to a possibility just to make it harder for the Sniper. No, exactly. I mean, I think managing the Sniper's cognitive load as the spy is huge. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, what, that's where, you know, fake banana red, we should talk after this game, we can talk about, like, the epic uh, uh, evolution of fake of the fake banana bread. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, originally, it was in there as a troll, like, only newbies would do it, but actually it turns out <laughs> to be a pretty expert strat. So yeah, I it killed, works. I got killed, I, I, I killed some Somebody for it just the other day, just uh, in the practice games. So uh, I was really surprised actually when it started. People, you know, elite players started using fake banana bread. I'm like, wait, don't these people know that it only gives up information? And it's true, it does actually only give up information, which we can talk about in more detail after this game. But it's but playing it's, to the side of paranoia, right? It throws the spot the sniper big time. All right, mm -hmm. um, off we go. So I don't need to watch for people getting too friendly here, but I do know that he has to complete one of the statue missions in order to win. So I'll be watching statues pretty closely, or will I? 
So anyway, <laughs> let's go. So I'm going to memorize 2-2. Two, two. Oh, I alighted there. Did not mean to. 2-2 two, two, and 2-1. Two, we I use numbers to denote height for anyone who does yeah, not I used know. Yeah, I used to do names, and then uh, have recently everybody seems to have switched the numbers since it's just so easy. There's you know so easy to remember groups of small small groups of numbers. So. Yeah, I used to have to chant it to myself over and over, and now I pretty much don't even worry about it. Yeah. Okay, just there for a second. I was looking for where my seduction target was, so that's not a good sign. Hmm. Oh. Let's see what happens here. Oh, I can't see it. Okay. I thought you might have gotten a green statue there. But it appears he is not, so we're just going to keep an eye on everything. Oh, banana bread. So let's low light people who could not have been in conversation. I like him, and I just realized the game is muted, so I could have gotten rid of those beeps. There we go. <laughs> Alright. He's sticking around in conversation here, so that's less suspicious. Hmm. Oh, I, was, I thought about it too. Okay. I, I thought you were going to add time, so I decided not to shoot, but I definitely saw you walk away from the statues very quick. So yeah, I was well, thinking it was you. Long. You were on the other side, but I had been there for too long, so I got nervous. Okay. Yeah, and i got to remember we're doing three of four. We're not doing four, because I'm so used to doing four that usually the matches go on a bit longer. i got to be more yeah, careful. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was asking. I'm not sure what the actual... I haven't played, like I said, since before break, so uh, the, the, I'm not sure what the actual fashion is right now, if it's yeah, three or four. Yeah, it seems the standard is any four or five on just about any map that allows it. On Veranda, usually a little more. On Balcony, it has to be less, obviously. But yeah. the funny thing is I, I was thinking about shooting you after I saw you walk away from the statue really quick, and I also noticed that right after the banana bread, you went straight to the statue you so yeah. to me that told me that you want to be out of conversation first off because you knew i was low lighting i even said it <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly you said and, it out and you went to the statue so i that's when i low lighted you and i should have shot after i saw you walk away early or highlighted you mean mm -hmm. yeah. well i did highlight you right away it's after you walked away from the statue yeah. early oh i see the um uh the the other thing is there's another tell there which is that the the ai's don't have any bias towards distance yes so in other words like real spies are constantly going to the nearest thing they need to do and the ai's don't actually think about that so like there's no more likelihood that they would go to that statue versus the statues on the complete other side of the map right yeah exactly and it's funny the guy who taught me that was someone that i actually mentored it was casey M -M 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 -M. right uh he i remember when he had very few games and i mentored him a bit and then later he got he is like double my play time now and yeah, he geez. actually taught me about that lack of bias on a human part for the uh, destinations yeah so it's kind of funny how that happens but anyway uh oh wrong banner let's talk about the death jam the death so, jam, yes. Yeah, the death jam, for those that don't know, was kind of a response to the stagnation of indie game jams, which we'll also talk about just a little bit. Actually, yeah, let's talk about yeah, indie I, game I jams first. Stagnation's maybe the wrong word. It's not stagnation, it's just the... the um, I guess diminishing returns, or... Well, I don't even know if it's that. I mean, there's lots of cool, wacky ideas come out of indie game jams. It's just that you don't get to explore them. You right. Know, it's like you know, four days. I mean, four. The funny thing is, when we first did, the, when we did the very first indie game jam, um, and I want to say we we did the first indie game jam that was called the indie game jam, but there were other things like Ludum Dare was a forty eight hour game competition, and there were other things that were similar to it about around the same time. So I'm not trying mm -hmm. to say, but the very first of the things that we called the indie game jam, we did it four days, and that's actually long for a jam nowadays. Like most of them are just a weekend, right? Um, and so like even the the idea that even four days is long when what we kind of came to this conclusion that like you know games need more time than that or at least some games need more time than that to explore so it was kind of yeah it was a kind of reaction to this kind of um well game jams when we, we, we back then back at the very beginning of Ludum Dare and 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 the indie game jam there mm -hmm. you know it felt like the whole game industry was stagnating so we did this crazy thing right, right. And they were doing this crazy thing and that's great but now there's so many game jams all the time um it feels like almost an overcorrection in that direction Right. Yeah, and uh, Spy Party actually came from, uh, was it Indie Game Jam number four, right? 
Yeah, so I can't remember exactly. It was like 2006 or something, and it was, uh, I think it was four. Um, it was basically one that we haven't actually put the code up online yet, but we got permission from EA to use the Sims, a- Sims 1 assets, right? So that means all the animations. We, had a, we, all, we wrote our own code but, um, and used some like, open source animation libraries and stuff, but, uh, um, but we could use all these Sims characters. So we basically bought, you know, we got copies of all the uh, um, uh, expansion packs and, and everything. We ripped all the models out of there using this exporter that we hacked together. That this guy named Brian Sharp, who works on B- at Bungie now, um, mm-hmm. hacked together. And all of the we had a gigabyte of models and a gigabyte of animations and just <laughs> crazy amounts of stuff from every Sims One expansion pack that we could get our hands on. Yeah. And so you just had this, and then we built this thing. He made this Perl script that like ground out this gigantic web page directory of it all with little animated gifs, so you could see what each animation was. It was totally nuts. Right. Um, uh, it's too bad it's so much content because we actually have permission from EA to to put it all up. Um, I just need to finish it up. It's just these things take forever to you know and like you know things, other things happen. But anyway, so during those times, I'm like at indie game jams since I was hosting them. I'm kind of always a midwife, never a mom kind of thing. So I right. never got a game done. And so I started working on Spy Party there, and I'm kind of glad I didn't get it done because I realized when I revisited the idea a couple of years later, I was like, oh, there's actually legs here. It's not like, just a there's a, there's some depth to this, which. Yeah, uh, yeah. Gets to like my next point, which I was gonna say. Sorry to rush you off of that there, but uh, I was gonna say you gave a rant recently or fairly recently about how you should basically please finish your game is the title yes. of the rant, and the idea is that games these days don't explore their mechanics to the full, I guess, extent that they deserve. Like there's not yeah, enough that's, depth in yeah, games. Yeah, that's kind of the key. What, what you just said is kind of the key. It's, it's to the extent the mechanic deserves. It's not like you have to spend X amount of time or Z amount of time on a game for different mechanics. It's that each mechanic gets explored to the depth that it deserves. You know, like right. so there are some mechanics that are just you know not that deep, and that's cool. There are plenty of great games out there that are not incredibly deep. Yeah. But when on to a mechanic that is does have the potential to be incredibly deep, it's I just kind a of shame. feel like. Yeah, I kind of feel like there's almost an ethical responsibility to explore it. And so that's when, 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 when kind of like a jam game will come out and you're like clear, it's so clear that that mechanic had a lot of legs and could really go deep. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a crime <laughs> to not explore it. Yeah, like uh, someone in chat just brought up the game Perspective. Uh, have mm-hmm. you seen that game? Mm-mm. Basically, it's, it's kind of like you control in first person through 3D world that any time you can stop the camera wherever it is and control a little Mega Man type guy who platforms uh, as if it were a 2D plane. Kind of, I guess oh, kind yeah. of like Fez except from with a free camera. Yeah, there was a, uh, there was a PSP game called... Uh, Crush. The, uh, Crush, yeah, that was very similar to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's another example of like another thing that we could touch on now or in another interview or whatever, which is this idea of like how many games there are in an area. Like, you know, the existence of Crush didn't make it so that Fez wasn't possible. When Braid was, when John was working on Braid, there were a bunch of other time manipulation games. I mean, Prince yeah, of Persia, totally. Sands of Time came out before. So it's really like, that's kind of part of this finish your game thing, which is that like, if you really do explore mechanics to the depth that they deserve, mm-hmm. and you do it in a way that is personal to you, your game is almost guaranteed not to be a clone because you're putting, putting you in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, just like if you write a novel, it's not going to be the same novel as I write, even if we write about a similar topic. Right, totally. Uh, are there any kind of of, are there any facets of death in Spy Party that you see and you know you want to hit, but you're not quite sure how to tackle it yet? Well, so there's there's actually kind of two Spy Parties, um, and I've decided to ship the first. <laughs> to, uh, and the, 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 the kind of nicknames for them are um, the current Spy Party, which is uh, Frank Lance, who's the kind of... Um, uh, he's a game designer who works um his company got bought by zynga in new york actually but he he's like the head of the nyu game center as well he's a super genius awesome guy Mm -hmm. um um, but he coined this term like clockwork party so like the kind of party right now is this like clockwork mechanism you kind of learn how it works it's kind of looking like looking into an automated dollhouse right right and so you see all the gears turning and that's what all the like elite strats right now are very much about the gears very gear oh yeah i mean all the all the talk on the forum right now is about pathing like that's yeah, the big exactly. rave. That's a big thing with the elite players in Spy Party right now is uh, the pathing. Basically, how you get from one point to another. There are a lot of elite players who are focusing a lot more on pathing now because they realize that since no one's focusing on it before, it's very easy to catch young spies with pathing problems. 
Right, or even experienced spies who don't know what they're doing as a tell yet. Yeah. Um, which is why it's so cool that people share so much information on the forums, because it's important to figure this stuff out like, and fix it. Um, if, it's, if it's a gratuitous thing, like Zero's uh, right. example on Veranda is just yeah, something the plant. I need to fix. <laughs> the plant thing. Yeah, yeah uh, that's not gameplay. Whereas when you decide to stop versus go, I consider that gameplay. But it's all very, like Frank Lance was saying, clockwork, right? So it's, it's very mechanistic at yes. some level. Uh, Absolutely. There's a ton of mind games and a ton of depth in, in in that, but and there's a there's it's it's kind of like the micro, you know, to use macro and micro and macro from mm -hmm. StarCraft. It you know that kind of stuff like pathing when you talk things like that is the micro of spy part. Right? Yeah, it's the kind of low level skill. Whereas the uh, macro is more uh, how many times people have done what. I guess it's the building suspicions. Yeah, yeah, the behavioral stuff and like, you know, oh, I've been too close to this statue for too long. I need to, you know, get away. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I need to, I need to, you know, there's another thing where it's like, ah, oh, damn, the ambassador came over to me. <laughs> you know, where you're like, get away from me, ambassador. I'm trying to like, you know, get rid of, I'm trying to get a low light. You're here, trying to, you know? yeah, you're trying to draw the sniper's eyes away and the ambassador is an easy way to get that. But yeah, uh, exactly. one more thing before we do a couple more rounds. Uh, so we, uh, you hit earlier that the, that game jams, it's not that they're regressing or uh, not or getting re uh, lack of return benefits, but there are a lot of prototypes being made where there's clearly some depth, but you, they're not giving that depth the justice it deserves. So that yeah, gave birth like to the depth jam. Right. Well, it kind of feels like, you know, a game jam is, I mean, this is a kind of a crude analogy, but it's kind of like peeing on territory in some sense. Like, you know, you can kind of like, oh, I've got this cool idea for, you know, take your 2D, 3D, you know, a Fez type idea or something like that, right? And you're like, you could easily imagine a, a game jam game of that that is like, you know, okay, or Braid is the perfect example, right? Like, I want to mm -hmm. do some rewind stuff. Um, you can imagine the like, you know, and there are actually a bunch of them out there, Flash games or, 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 or downloadable games that have a little bit of that in there. But it's not the same as if you really explore that that mechanic. Um, John Blow and uh, Mark Ten Bosch, who's doing that game, Mega Curry. Yes. Is that 40, 40 puzzle. Oh game. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they give a talk actually about um, kind of. Uh, I mean, it sounds kind of highfalutin, but basically like un discovering truths about the universe via you know game design and right. the idea that you basically like you you. John has this saying that you know. He actually said this about Spy Party when we very first started, because he started working on The Witness at the same time I started working on Spy Party, and so we kind of had these, like, you know, he lives nearby and we're friends, and so we were working on the games together back when, before we really knew what they were, mm -hmm. and I had done this original prototype. Um, I, the Game Jam, the, the, the game jam, the indie game jam version of Spy Party never got working, really. I mean, it compiled, but it didn't quite work. And so I was going to ask was, what that version was like. Like, yeah. if, you had never, if you had never sat down and really developed it, what would that prototype be like today? Yeah, basically it was the people walking around in ballroom. Um, but there's no, like, I don't even think there were conversation circles. It was very, wow. very rudimentary, right? But wow. the idea was I could control one of them eventually after a few more days of work, um, which was probably spread out over months because I actually was working on sports time. <laughs> but, um, uh, but uh, you know, you could end up, it ended up such that there was no sniper camera or anything, but I could set the camera up, and then I controlled one of the characters with the keyboard, uh. and I recorded a Fraps video of this, and I sent it around to some friends, and I said, can you tell which one I am? Uh, and no very one cool. could tell. And I was like, okay, I know I'm onto something now that no one can tell. Because actually, I told Will Wright about the idea back when I was on Spore, and he was like, oh, it'll be totally easy to tell mm -hmm. who the spy is. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, you know. You think so. <laughs> but yeah, so exactly. So I mean, that's just the hunch. No one knew, right? So, um, but I was so glad because if if you can if you can really easily tell who the spy is, it's very hard to make the game. But if right. it's way too hard to tell what this who the spy is, then I just make the tells more obvious. Yeah, right? I mean, there's a user question later that focuses a little on that. But go on. Okay, cool. Yeah. So so anyway, so I knew I was onto something once I knew that it was very hard to tell. You just flooded with information. So all this stuff happened. But um, but at that point, John said. Um, and this is what I was getting back, getting back to the depth idea. Like it has that feeling of like you pull on a thread and there's more red in there, you know? Yeah. So like that, that you want that feeling early on in a game where you're like, I'm pulling on this thread and it's not like, Oh, a tiny little thread, you know, you're, you've got a mm -hmm. shirt and you want to pull on you, the thread. When right? you, you can tell when there's a lot more thread to pull that it's a prototype you should pursue. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you can tell the whole sweater is going to unravel before I like get done with this one thread, as opposed <laughs> to just like pop, you pull it out, and it's like, oh, that must have just been an extra thread that was sewn in there. Right. That's a um, really, really good analogy for, I guess, budding game designers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just so that pulling thread thing, you just want that, and then you want to be able to like, and then, and then the key is to be, a be able to recognize that, and then know what to do. You know, um, how to keep pulling on the thread, um, and basically having this kind of. Uh, um, 
what's the right word? It's almost like an ethical moral thing where it's it, having kind of the fearlessness, I guess, is a, mm-hmm. is a kind of a way to put it, to yeah. just keep pulling on the thread and see where it takes you. In fact, I mean, the example with Spy Party is that, like, so Go, you know, the Asian board game Go. Yes, yeah. um, uh, it's it's my favorite game in the world. It's the most beautiful game. Yeah, ever. I think Hootie, who uh, if you remember, also got in the Spy Party beta. I think he plays yeah. Go. So. Yeah, yeah. So Go, my my friend Mark uh, LeBlanc, who's a game designer, had this great saying about Go. He said, "When the um, when the aliens land and we finally learn to communicate with the aliens, and then we describe Go, they'll be like, oh yeah, we have that.'" Because it's just this kind of like uber game, right? It's this, you know, it's like this fundamentals, like the simplest rules of the most complicated game. Anyway, it's a very beautiful game. I kind of wanted to make a Go. I mean, Go is a highly competitive game. You know, people devote their lives oh, yeah. to it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was kind of making Go, and and I was thinking, oh, Spy Party is going to be like Go. I mean, not anywhere near as awesome as Go, but I was like, that's kind of my like, you know, guiding light. Mm-hmm. And then it slowly dawned on me. There's another amazing, beautiful, competitive game that a lot of people play called Poker, right? Yeah. Um, and it's kind of the polar opposite. In fact, that guy Frank Lance, who we mentioned earlier, has this amazing talk, um, which is I've, is linked, but on Poker and Go and the differences between them, yeah. but how they're both in pre- beautiful and deep, but different, very different. You know, Go is a full knowledge game. It's just crystalline. Um, poker is this dirty, nasty thing. Right. Where, like, swindling it's deceptive. People all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, the influence of Poker on Spy Party is extremely yeah. apparent. Well, so we, I resisted it for a while, actually. For the longest time, I was like, no, I'm trying to make Go here, until I finally was like, no, no, the game wants to be poker. And it's like, it's just, you have to, like, kind of, and it was kind of this eye-opening thing where I was like, all right, I have to go that way. It's the right game. You know, right. it's the, the game. So you're kind of following the game in that sense, and it's just that you have to do that. If you try and fight the game the whole time, like, it's going to tell you. It, it talks to you as you're making mm-hmm. it. You have to listen. Totally. Uh, before, we're, I'm going to get to Def Jam after the next set of mat- matches, I decide. But anyway, uh, the chat was asking, you mentioned that there were two versions, there are essentially two versions of Spy Party, and you decide to right, ship okay, one. Yeah, so I didn't finish that. So, so the first one is the, is the, um, is the Clockwork Party. Yes. That's what basically it is going to be. I mean, I'm going to make the pathing better. The AI is going to be better. The animation system is going to blend better. You've already seen the new art for the characters. It's all going to look better. But at the end of the day, the discussions on the forum a year or two years from now are going to be similar to the discussions now. Hopefully fewer bug reports, but, you know, very much like, oh, do you see how they act when those two characters are together? You know, Mm -hmm. I think that, like, the timing of this, like, I think that maybe um, you could tell that someone's a spy if they're around the ambassador, you know, a little bit longer or what, you know, there's going to be similar similar micro conversations like that right right the second game and that's the one i realized that is working really well i've got a game that's working really well it's rare to have a game that works at all right so i've already got the clockwork party work like why would i not embrace that right right the second game that i'm is like a spy party 2 kind of thing which got i mean given how slow i am god knows you know, <laughs> next <sometimes>. spy party <laughs> yes next century um but the spy party 2 or, or the, the other version is this kind of what I call behavioral spy party, where which is funny because the g- current game is behavioral, right? Mm-hmm. But just really focusing on this idea of smooth uh, behavioral flow. So almost removing the hard tells, trying to remove the the kind of mechanistic micro of the current game, right? And going to a much softer, very much like that person's acting strangely thing, which you get now. Okay. Um, and the, the fact that you get that now is what made me okay giving up that kind of higher end, in some sense, game. That like, um, yeah, it's it's not really well defined because I realized that like the current game has so much in it that it, it could take, you could explore it for a lifetime. So, but right. the, you you could imagine a kind of softer, less. Uh, um, Less clockwork, basically. Everything is much more smoothed out and much more. Right, behavior. because essentially the sniper would never get a hard tell. Like right. they would just get surmounting evidence, and then at the end of the time, they would have to say, "Okay, this person is the most likely," even if I don't have any solid proof. Yeah, which in, in, in some sense it's like a subset of the current gameplay, although really doubling down on that. So you can imagine a game there that's much more like a um, uh, a conversation, you know, like much more flowing and and smoother no rough edges or no no sharp edges Mm -hmm. but the sharp edges like i realized i I originally i mean this is is actually is totally on that same topic i originally thought um that the goal was to remove all the hard tells like there's three kinds of tells right there's there's hard tells which are Mm -hmm. an animation that spy plays but nobody else does right there's soft tells which are like the banana bread thing which allow you to deductively eliminate part of the party but you don't know exactly who did it right right then there's behavioral tells things like taking a book from one bookshelf to the other no individual animation in that is is something that the npcs don't do they would just never actually put the book away at the wrong bookshelf right Right. like there's nothing that that would prevent the ai from or the ai is able to do it but they never will 
yeah, they play all the same animations, everything, they just wouldn't ever do that. And so there's soft, hard, and behavioral tells. And I originally thought the goal of the game was to get rid of all the hard tells. Um, and this is another thing where you have to listen to your game. And then I realized, no, hard tells are the only time the spy gets a feeling of relief. Like, if you bug the, I mean, you'll feel, that you'll, you'll, this, you'll recognize this emotion. You bug the ambassador and you're not dead five seconds later. It's mm -hmm. such a relief. Right, right? absolutely, because that's the got, moment of truth there. Yeah, and you got away with it, and so that that the hard tells actually are what provide the like um, high like the 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 the, the um, stress relief cycles in the game because otherwise it's just so stressful and it's just building and building and building and building and they must be onto me, you know. Yeah. You get a little bit if you get away with a statue swap and you're not dead. If you get away with a bug ambassador and you're not dead, it provides this relief that's really important. In fact, one of the reasons that uh, the new characters are going to be. Um, comedic is maybe the wrong word, but just a little bit leavened with kind of like a lightness of stylization is right. because the game is so tense. Um, mm -hmm. Like, there's multiple reasons to stay away from realism, but one of them is the game is like chewing nails already. Um, <laughs> so you kind of, kind of need to leaven that a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's see. Let's just play a couple more rounds, and then after that we're going to talk a little bit about Spore. Okay, cool. You want to do some balcony? Get people some arcade. Oh action? yeah, I'd love to do some balcony. Balcony is probably my favorite map, and I think if there, or it's either that or courtyard too. But if there is a vote on that thread for a favorite map, and the single vote is balcony, it's probably me. <laughs> awesome. Well, look, let's play like four rounds of balcony because it goes fast. Okay, sounds good. So balcony is an exposed spy level. It's almost like arcade mode for spy party, just because of how fast it is. Although what's interesting is that the best, one of the best players in the game right now claims that it's not. He claims it's one of the deeper levels because it's so much about the behavioral stuff. Yeah, it's so pure. And if anything, this level is the closest to the other version of Spy Party that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, in some sense. All right, are you ready? Yep. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to watch the ambassador like a goddamn hawk on this map because he's such an attractive mission to use. An attractive blonde man, right? Right? Because <laughs> you know you want to bug him. Oh, I'm totally bugging the ambassador right now. Oh, is there that I so? I just bugged him. And then you walk to the window? Yes. Think he's bluffing? <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were maybe double bluffing, but I didn't see the bug. I should have trusted my instincts, and I did not do that. I'm glad I hung tight. <laughs> very, very good. Look very good mind games. They both have Santa hats on. Yeah, and it's funny because I, I, I was like really confident I didn't see the bug, but I decided to go based more on my, I guess, just the appeal of the bluff and to see how that plays out so the chat could see that. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, there's this whole question of whether you put voice chat into games, right? I think LOL actually <laughs> doesn't have it because people don't you do want don't want to encourage the badness. Um, but uh, but this idea that like does voice chat, you know, I, people can always organize their own Skype voice chats, like right? This. Of course. Um, and so I'm I'm nervous to actually put it in. All right, <laughs> ready? Ready. All right. And okay. I don't have a good sniper strategy for this level yet. For me, I always just watch Ambassador like crazy because really, I you can kind of see everyone no matter what angle you're at anyway. Yeah, yeah, so that's the, I mean, really the design. The, 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 I designed this map from the start. Um, nice banana bread. Um, uh, everyone except for the ambassador is is. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice this happens a lot. You'll start a train of thought vocally and then just completely cut off in the middle. And Vine Sauce probably yeah. notices me do that all the time when I'm playing this. Yeah, it's like hard. I'll start talking I, and then all of a sudden just drop out. <laughs> some of the some of the really uh, frequent streamers can talk the entire game, and I just have no idea how they do it. Yeah, beats me. Like Titleist is good at that. It seems like. Yeah, and Viri as well. I I want to actually start to. Uh, um, I want to. Uh, I want to start doing a streaming show, like a you know weekly streaming show of me learning to play my own game. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm so terrible now compared to... Oh, nice. There you go. 
That was fun. Uh, yeah, I thought about bugging early on because the ambassador decided to kind of park up next to me, but I yeah. decided against it, especially as I was telling you to telling watch the ambassador. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> All right, two more of this. But yeah, I got nothing but green ATs helps a ton. Yes. Uh, someone in chat asked, and I'm pretty sure I read this already, but I'm going to ask just to be safe. Uh, are the ATs inspired by Gears of War? Yeah, yeah. I actually talked to Cliffy. I, I went and visited them, and I was uh, talking to him about because it's it's different in the sense that uh, it randomizes along two axes. Because in Gears of War, the uh, um, it basically becomes a rhythm thing, right? You you know, right. The reload since it's always exactly the same timing. You just like you know you can go reload, reload, boom, and you can get it every time. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure I avoided that, so I talked to Cliff about it and like you know about whether they t did that versus you know whether they they looked into that and they just he just wanted to be a muscle memory thing whereas i right. wanted to be an actual thing that a know, reactionary thing yeah it costs cognitive load right like you have to decide to do it mm -hmm. um and you're not looking at the party when you're doing it too which is another interesting thing i mean oftentimes like the laser will sweep around while you're distracted by an action by the action test. <laughs> yeah um, just in I that one split done. second of action test yeah um, so I wanted it to be, and it's, I'm super happy with how it worked out. It actually, there's a big article on uh, on the blog about the pr before and after, and like including some comments from other game designer friends before the beta was opened, who were playtesters, mm -hmm. and uh, just the whole. I'm, I mean, it's worked out amazingly well. I was I was a little nervous about it because it's kind of goofy to put a Gears of War action active reload in the middle of your your kind of behavioral game, but um, the multi level randomization. Basically, the idea there was like it. I wanted there to be some small amounts of of physical skill, like you know, twitch skill, right? Not so much like a shooter is like almost all twitch skill right. in front. And you start to get the, you know, or, or even my, or even StarCraft, like you've got the um, the APM, and you know, you, you you've got to master the micro. Um, here, I wanted the macro to be the kind of predominant thing, but there to be some micro at the physical skill level. Mm -hmm. um, so that includes things like walking and things like that. And but you know, the action test is an example of that where. Um, I think it, it makes the game deeper. In, in fact, early on, the game uh, was pushed with click to move. And besides the fact that that doesn't work with console controllers very well, it felt more um, uh, removed from, you know, the character. Yeah. And so the fact that it's now direct control, I think, worked a lot better. The game's deeper because of that, even though it means newbies get shot all the time for walking badly. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's play another one. Okay, here we go. Go... Ooh, interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> oh, was that? Might have been. And then there's a talk immediately after. I think I saw you bug him, but I'm not completely sure. Okay, well, <laughs> should, probably should probably take the shot then, if you're probably, sure. Probably, probably. Headquarters, headquarters doesn't care about casualties. Hmm, and then that was an interesting twitch out of convert, or out of window, if that is you. Of course, if I'm correct, then you're going to be playing it cool. I would never do that. Always play it nervous. <laughs> now he's talking again. Hmm. Second time doing briefcase on her. Time hits. <laughs> okay, that's the guy I was gonna shoot if it went to overtime. That was because oh, yeah. so what, what happened was you, you seduced right, right when you entered conversation, yeah, and that's a big one I'm time. catching people on lately is yeah. uh, seducing right away. I was running out of time. I was time management is even on this map is such an important part of of spy. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you get just a couple of not ideal uh, p uh, conversation landings and ATs on Seduce, then it can Seduce can get drawn out for so long. Yeah, I mean, I got a, I was not anywhere close to him, and I whited the Seduce every time the action mm -hmm. test. The, right. the different levels of insistence that maybe doesn't make any sense. It's green is a good action is the best action test. White is neutral, and then red is a terrible one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll ask that later, Dan. But yeah, I was going to say that was also a good example of why having an itchy trigger finger can be a bad thing, or rather, yeah. it could keep you from some wins if you have the wrong suspect. Sometimes you can just, if you're feeling pretty confident that uh, the spies and flee his missions, then you can just wait out the timer. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Shooting in the last ten seconds is. I I used to say it's all stupid. My, all my instincts, but yeah, it's really a bad idea. Unless it goes, if it goes to OT, shoot immediately because you have no idea how much time you have left. Right, and well, here's the thing. Some people like to time their last mission to be in the fifteen second range, just so that the sniper will wait for the overtime on purpose. So if yeah. there's something like if there's something that I think is a mission and it happens in more than ten seconds, then I might shoot. That time I knew that if you had seduced or if you had banana bread, which is what you did, that it was less than 10 seconds, then I knew that the only way you could win is through overtime. If yeah, overtime I had kicked in, I would have shot who was my highest suspect was, which was you. Yeah, and that's actually a much better play. Like, I should have looked at the clock and gotten it in before 10. Right, if he had done it at the 11 second mark, then uh, I might have shot him, I might have shot someone else by accident, so... Yeah, the um, the key thing there is that the it's like Jenga where you can't just like do the last mission and it's over. There's a 10 second countdown timer. Right. Um, that you have to basically stand up for 10 seconds. Your game mm -hmm. has to stand up. All right, you ready? Yep. All right. And then after this, we'll talk a bit about Spore. Cool. I can hear your mouse clicks. Oh yeah. Click cl click quietly. <laughs> it's a huge tell actually. Yeah, that's true. Although I think that was just you taking control, so I think it's okay. Or maybe I was flirting at a window. Ah, uh, true. Because that has no animation. Or maybe I'm just covering my ass. <laughs> maybe you have another mouse that you're clicking with your other hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They actually have silent mice. I've like researched this a little bit. And I was thinking right. about like um, uh, when... Uh... All right, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Banana bread. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was bad because <laughs> the second I did the, the first banana bread, the the target. Uh, I mean, sorry, the um the DA just walked out of conversation. The right. second one, half the people left anyway. And at that point, you probably had a couple people low lighted, which a couple people on this map is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, I was just gonna say that the silent mice that are clickless. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking like you totally do a, I'll, I'll totally do a spy party like sponsored mouse or something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have to come, we have to come up with some really clever spy party name. <laughs> like, uh, man, if I was if I was a clever man, I'd think of one right now. But loose, loose clicks sink ships or attracts <laughs> bullets or something. There you go. All right, so I'm going to add to the call Vinny or Vine Sauce, as some know him, the uh, owner of VineSauce.com, and he's going to talk a bit about Spore because he streamed it. He's played a heck of a lot more of it than I have, so he is more knowledgeable about Spore. So cool. I'm going to add him to the call and get hey, my look. Spore overlay up. He has a question mark for a head in Skype. <laughs> Hello? Oh, he's a mushroom. Hello? I am a mushroom. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. I mean, the interview's going great so far. I've learned a lot about Spy Party. Awesome. And I'm excited for the future of yeah, Spy thanks Party. Thanks for hosting it. Anytime. Well, thank KY, really. KY is yeah. um, he's fantastic. Yes, he is. We love him. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you for letting <laughs> us borrow him into our community, too. Oh, anytime. I mean, I haven't seen as much of him, but... Um... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's reasonable. That's... I have about, like, 40 hours in Spy Party. Yes. That's... uh. That's your game's fault for being so addictive. So you're doing something right, Chris. Good. Um, well, I really wanted to just kind of ask you a few quick questions about Spore because sure. um, a lot of people were disappointed with Spore for you know a number of reasons, um, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. Um, I actually mostly enjoyed the game, and I sunk a good 50, 60, maybe even 70 hours into that game. Wow. Um, which... 
mostly was on the creature creator, believe it or not. Yeah, I was going to say, what was your, uh, well, I believe it, it what was, I was going to ask what your favorite part of the game was. Well, I mean, you know, I did like some of the space elements, and um, I, I loved the building stuff and the, you know, the ships, but the creature creator just stole the show. And uh, I remember streaming just every now and then I'd boot up the creature creator and just make some weird stuff, uh, some of it very phallic. Uh, I regret that. <laughs> you're, not, you're, you, you're not the only one to have made Sporn. <laughs> Sporn. <laughs> That's good. Well, it's a first. Oh, God. Um, so, Chris, tell me, uh, tell, why don't you tell the chat, really, what you had to do with um, the development of Spore? Okay. Um, well, so I've got a web page that goes into this in way more detail. But the brief yeah, and I'll link it. it. Yeah, yeah. The brief version of it is that... Uh, um, I basically so from it so I was the majority almost uh, the major, the vast majority of the stuff I worked on was was basically stuff having to do with bringing the uh, creatures to life so okay. um there were basically three you know that is everything okay um three big technologies there was uh the creature skin basically getting this you know getting the polygons to flow over the skeleton correctly um yeah. painting the skin so like all the different things you could drop onto the skin um you know like all the war Oh, the call's cutting out a bit. Creatures. Um, basically, the thing okay, it's that, back like, now. You, is, is everything good? Yeah, it cut out for like three seconds, but it should be good now. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so like the 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 creatures and the creature skin paint and the and the creature animation system. So like the that moment when you first put an arm on the like blob and it like kind of comes to life and looks at its own arm is uh, the stuff that um, is the stuff that I spent most of the time working on. There was some other stuff I did like the um, AI system for the creature game the low-level AI system, and I did some design on the creature game stuff as well. But for the most part, I was programming um, the va the majority. So I, I'd say I spent a quarter of the time getting the skin going, and then a quarter of the time getting the skin paint going, and then the rest of the entire time. I mean, I was on it for six years, and I wasn't even the longest person on there, um, which is a very, very long time, <laughs> Yeah, uh, was the creature animation system. Because there's, you know, I basically, I wrote a paper about it that was published in SIGGRAPH, actually. Um, basically, how to animate a creature that you've never seen before is, is you know, you know, there's, you know, you would make a creature, and we had to animate it, even though we had shipped the animations, you know, months or years before. And so, getting that technology to work was the core thing that I worked on. But yeah, all those things about the creature coming to life um, that I think, I think, like, for all of Spore's faults, and I'll, I'll be the first to criticize various parts of Spore. Like, I think that game had more magic in it than most games. Like, mm -hmm. it was deeply flawed in a lot of ways, but the magical aspects, and especially the creature editor, in my opinion, and it sounds like you agree, like, was just pure magic. Like. Um, we actually didn't know how people were going to react to it. When we, do you remember early before we released, we released the free creature editor? Oh, yeah. Um, and it was just the, the, yeah. And we had no idea. I mean, we, we weren't sure who was going to like the game. And, like, even the uh, crazy dudes in the Something Awful forums just went nuts making creatures, which sounds like similar to what you did, basically. Uh -huh. like this, you know, just start up the stream and, like, just build crazy shit all the time. Yeah. And uh, it was so cool for that. Yeah, that was... Um... <laughs> Man, you're bringing back some memories with that. Um, I'll tell you what, when that Creature Creator first came out, the possibilities just seemed endless. And and they were for quite a long time. And that's why I, I'm like, you know, I'm really, really happy to get a chance to talk to you because um, Spore was definitely, you know, like like you said, it was flawed, but it had that magic. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned in your um, article on, on your blog that this development in this game was almost unprecedented like when you when you look back at you know all the stuff that happened in this game and all the different components that came together or maybe didn't come together in the end right. product um, it was still a very unique and um, exceptionally um, large game yeah, I mean, and, Spore, uh, certainly, yeah. Spore has its faults but one of the faults is not uh, uh, too conservative of a design <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. It was definitely, it was definitely ambitious to say the least. Um, what would you say aside from the creature creator? Um, it, just in case it is your favorite aspect. But aside from that, what what's your favorite aspect of Spore? Yeah, I mean, for me, like the the creature stuff just blows everything else out of the water. I mean, I think I, there's amazing vehicles and stuff and 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 buildings you could make in those editors. So so I mean, in general, the answer to that question is the editors. Um, 
you know, the, the creation part of the game. Like, I felt like the, the, the disappointment for me, at least, was the gameplay part of the game. Um, yeah. And we can talk about that in a second, because it, it actually relates to the way that the editors worked. But, um, but all the editors, I think, were just beautiful. Like, I mean, just you'd see the stuff that our artists would do, um, and it's just amazing. We had a 3D printer, and uh, uh, we had a couple 3D printers during development, and, like, you know, they'd go build some building or some creature or whatever and then print it out, and it'd be this little, little toy on their desk. Yeah. And it was just so cool. You know, John Simino, who's the artist for Spy Party now, I worked with him on Spore for, like, six years, and he was, like, one of the main character. Um, there were, like, there were... Um, there were three character animators, um, three or four, depending on when you measured it. But um, and he would do all of like all of the all of those awesome animations in the in the creature creator where you know the character would dance or he'd look at his arms or he'd do some growl. Those are all John's animations and just the amount of expressivity he could get. And then he would build these amazing creatures too, and then print them out. And so his desk was just littered <laughs> with these characters, just all over. It was like it was it looked like a toy shop in there. It was really cool. Yeah, so yeah the cre the creativity was the key for me. I just think that's great. I mean, Heim Gingold, who was one of the designers on the creature editor, um, and all the editors actually had this saying, he, he used this term magic crayons, where it's this kind of idea that like, you know, you use Maya or some big 3D animation program and it's like impossible. You know, it's a wider variety of stuff you could make in a game, in a, in a pro program like that. But the, the, if you think about um, the, uh, uh, if you think about the, um, like the, the amount of good stuff you can make in there versus bad stuff, um, the amount of good stuff is, is is dwarfed by the amount of bad stuff you can make in a game like in in anything like Maya, right? Yes. And but whereas in Spore, the idea was make it so that almost everything you made in there was good. Yeah, um, I can see that. That's a design yeah. design philosophy that definitely paid off. Yeah, no, and I think that's amazing. I mean, it's just like um, it's just so cool to be able to to. I mean, you just you can still go to the Sporepedia right now and see people are still making stuff. You know, totally sure. cool stuff. Um, and that's great. Well, I believe um, after something, you know, just kicked in me, like just talking about all this stuff, I think you guys can expect uh, a Spore Creature Creator stream in the near future. I think I might revisit that. It's been a few years. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's something I'll be doing. But Hopefully, it's, hopefully it still runs, but yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I, it's, it's never not entertaining. Uh, always will be. Um, and just to, you know, uh, I only have a few more questions, but... Uh, like you mentioned earlier, the gameplay aspect of Spore was, was the disappointment. And I would agree with that. By the time I got to space, um, as fun as the space segments were to like tel terraform and you know, kind of just do your own stuff and explore, it was also very limiting. And the previous stages were extremely limited. Um, and the, the gameplay never really um, coalesced. Like each, each segment felt segmented. And uh, it was kind of, I guess, the point, but it didn't quite mesh. So that's my opinion, but what's your opinion? What would be a few basic things that you think might have fixed Spore? Well, so the, the big thing for me is this thing that we all talked about internally, and it's called editor consequence, which basically means the things you made in the... So, so, so the thing that I think was missing, to answer your question and to name it, is this thing called editor consequence, where, you know, you'd build this amazing thing, but it wouldn't really matter in game. It would matter, yes. you know, oh, did it have these feet or whatever, but, like, the shape didn't matter, like, whether it could reach the fruit in the trees or any of these things. Um, and so that is the key like it was missing this editor consequence and like the so i think the 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 right game design there the thing that we should have done was figure out how to um how to have editor consequence how to have the things that you made matter yeah. um and i think that would have changed everything i think that we i think that the the um i think the uh i think the i think the game could have been smaller but been deeper with editor consequence, like even just the creature game, like if the things you like, like just uh, just reaching a piece of fruit or just like any of the um, any of the things, you know, running faster means longer legs. All of these things that we kind of had just boiled down in the end to just stats on the parts. Yeah. Um, it's just a bummer, um, and I think that could have been true everywhere. Like you know, buildings matter to your city. Like vehicles matter. Like all of these things. It's just that's a really really difficult. Uh, um, game to make, and we totally failed to make that game. I think that, like, you know, the fact that, uh, it, I think, I mean, there's a whole bunch of reasons, right? Like, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that kind of thing doesn't come together. Um, the, 
there was you know too many design cooks in the kitchen there was there was it, it's an incredibly hard technical problem it's like sure. you know you're supposed to innovate along one axis at a time not like eight axes at a time yeah, yeah, <laughs> like definitely. you know all of those things but for me so ignoring how hard it is to do that that's the key like if we had been able to do editor consequence even just in the creature editor um but in, in hopefully in all the editors along with the you know the levels that associated with each editor i think that would have been kind of the sistine chapel of games in some sense yeah it could have been um and it was close and it was still really you know to this day i still i still have a fond memory of spore um but a lot of people view it with disappointment um which leads to the question do you feel that that disappointment will in some ways damage ambitious game design such as you know when spore was first announced people were over the moon with excitement, as was I. And it, it seems like this kind of thing maybe taught people a lesson like, oh, you know, uh, maybe we won't do that. Maybe we won't try that. Maybe that was just too much. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, I, I actually do think Spore was too much in some sense. Like, I think that, like, ambition, like, I mean, it's... it's so, yeah, in some sense, there's truth to what you're saying, um, even though I... You want ambition, but you don't want. So here's here, here's I'll make an analogy to to show mm -hmm. you what I'm saying. So like, yeah. so people talk about moonshots when they talk about projects like that. You know, mm -hmm. this idea of shooting for the moon. Reach for and the stars. I, I would yeah, I was thinking about um, the actual moonshot where they actually successfully landed dudes on the moon and they lived and got came back, and mm -hmm. it took ten years and all of these tiny incremental steps, right? And so it's not that you can't shoot for the moon, but you have to understand that you don't, you know, if they had just gone for the moonshot in 1961, the thing would have blown up and killed three people on the launch pad, right? right? So you have to actually, like, take the smaller steps and, like, kind of be sure. You don't have to be quite as sure as they are because we're not risking people's lives here, but, like, it, it, it makes, I think it makes for a really good analogy where you have to... Uh, um, start slowly and 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 make sure it's like you know uh, there's that phrase like your reach exceeds your grasp or whatever you want to you want to you want to reach just outside your comfort zone but not so far that you're just going to fail utterly you know yeah um, totally yes yeah, so you have to build up so I don't think that um, I think Spore reached so far that uh, um, that it's not actually even a good example of failing to meet your goals because the goals were so far outside what we were going to meet in some sense if you especially if you look at will's original gdc talk you know the the, the thing that kind of announced the game yeah um that said i don't actually believe i mean this this gets to pr and marketing like i don't think you can overhype a game um people were, were like oh no spores overhyped now you know it's got so much press and stuff like that i actually think that all you can do is under deliver i think there's no such thing. if spore had delivered on all that stuff it would have been amazing oh um, sure yeah so I'm not actually worried about, like, for example, overhyping Spy Party, but I do set my goals. I, tr I one of the things I learned. Well, I, I learned two things. One that, like I said at the very beginning of the interview, the um, the uh, uh, that the the depth first accessibility later thing is something I learned. That, that basically, what happened was I, the other half of that story that I told is Rob Pardo gave that talk at GDC Austin right in the middle of Spore's development, and I was like, oh my god, this is exactly the opposite of what we're doing. We're basically doing accessibility first, depth never, you know, right. because we're just not getting to it. Yeah. And so I decided to err completely on the other side with Spy Party, where it's like I'm going to go a hundred percent towards depth, and I'll deal with the accessibility totally later because the opposite I know doesn't work. Um, and so. I think that uh, um, uh, I think that you want to keep innovating and things like that, but you need to have a better strategy for doing it than just we want to do this cool thing. You know, that's a great answer. Um, perfect. Why? Thanks. And, <laughs> and uh, I guess my I did have one more idea just that I wanted to throw at you the the Steam Box. All right, so you know Valve has definitely in, um, innovated and has almost in some ways revived um, the excitement towards PC gaming. Um, with Steam, and yeah, you know it's totally. not Steam's single-handedly, awesome. but definitely a huge part of it. Yeah, and totally. uh, they just announced their Steam Box, which I let's just assume neither of us know too much about it. Just sure. as a general concept, how do you feel about the idea of this this device that plays your Steam games on a TV in the living room? How, how does that concept strike you? I mean, I, I don't know the the the. the uh... I mean, I'm, I'm, so I tell, okay, so, so I have a general philosophy about this kind of stuff, and then we can talk specifically about that if you want. Sure. But, like, my general philosophy about this stuff is actually based on this. Um, there's this EA producer guy, his name is Neil Young. He ended up, like, leaving EA and starting this company called NG Moco, which is, like, you know, a big mobile phone game company. But anyway, he gave, when he was at EA, he was a, a producer, and he gave a talk at this, uh, 
um, executive producer like convention thing that they produce they, that they put the video on the EA internal like you know you know game dev whatever and it was called sailing not rowing and it was just about you know like how to you know go with the flow as opposed to against it um, but anyway there's this one part in the talk that I, that really struck with me stuck with me and he, it was when he was talking about the weather he was making all these sailing analogies about how you know you want to you want to sail, not row. Of course, you want to be able to row if you need to and things like that. But this part with the weather like, really stuck with me where the weather are all these things you can't control, right? Mm. And so um, for me, platforms are like the weather. Like I can spend time, you know, p blogging about whether this platform – and I did that actually way, way back in the day, way before Spore even. I, I spent a bunch of time evangelizing uh, 3D graphics APIs, o OpenGL over Direct3D and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was – it was basically frustrating. Like it's really hard to get the platform, you know, to ch to change the platform holders' minds. Um, and at the end of the day, I realized that like actually doing game design is is just a much more leveraged way of like bettering society than whether you know a given platform or a given API or something wins. It's like you know, it, games in some sense are like where film was in like 1905. Like there's so much to be discovered. I mean, you know, they, they're we're still discovering in, you know, in the film analogy that we can move the camera or you know that, that like you can actually film it out of sequence and edit it back together and things like that. All of those like base level grammar things are still to be discovered in games, I think. Yeah. And so, so, um, so like I tend to think of things like platforms, like next gen or you know any of that stuff, um, the Steam Box or the Wii U or you yeah. know whether or not you know uh, um, uh, XBLA is around or who, who, all of these things. I tend to think of that as the weather, and I think of like the the, the knobs that I actually have control over are uh, um, our game quality. You know, that's the one thing I really can control is how awesome my game is, hopefully, yeah. knock on wood. <laughs> um, but, uh, and so I have to believe that if I make an awesome game and I make it as awesome as I possibly can, there'll be a place to sell it uh, when I'm done. And uh, so far, that's turned out to be true. And I hopefully, I, I, don't, I can't imagine a world in where that's not true. Now, who knows what that platform is going to be? I assume it's going to be PC like now because it's the open beta and then eventually it'll be, you know, whether it's the current gen or next gen or who mm -hmm. even knows. But, um, but the, uh, uh, um, but the, but I have to assume that if I make an awesome game, that I'll be fine. And so I, I, I think a little bit about platform. Like for with the Wii U, I've thought a little bit about it because hey, that seems like a perfect spy party couch machine, you know, like that because of the controller and stuff like that. And we can talk about that later sure. if you want. But um, but I try not to worry too much. Like people are like, oh, you're coming right at the end of the console transition. Are you worried about that? And I'm like, I mean, you're worried in the sense that like, oh, I hope everything works out. But I have to just like. I have to control the knobs that I have control over, you know, which is the yeah. game quality. And I have to believe that, like, if current gen is the place to ship, cool. If next gen is the place to ship, cool. But if my game's awesome, then I, I'll be able to do either one of those, and it won't matter that much. So that's, that's my kind of naive uh, artiste version of our answer to that question. Uh, that's, I had that's to that's point out, I, was looking for, I had sure. to point out a wonderful piece of irony. I remember there was a little bit of controversy uh, back. You said some in some quote that basically the Wii is not a good console, simply. Uh, it sh it's not everything it should have been, basically. At least. Yeah, well, I was complaining. I was complaining about the. I was complaining about the CPU power of the Wii. And right. Said right. How, I mean, the, the the technical version of what I was saying was that the that CPU power matters um, right. to make to, to doing games, especially now while we're still trying to figure out what games are about. Yeah. Um, and so I called the Wii a piece of shit, which I didn't realize <laughs> at the time that I called it two two game cubes duct taped together and a piece of shit. And I, what I didn't realize at the time, this is back when this is the year that E three died. If you remember, I mean, it yeah. Kind of, was reanimated but so all of the press went to gdc that year and i didn't realize this and they like covered it and <laughs> i also this is the, i worked on spore and spore was like at the pinnacle of its pr at that point you know of its hype and so i didn't realize but what happened was there were all these headlines that were like spore developer calls we a piece of shit and i was <laughs> like <laughs> um uh, I almost got some PR people fired at EA. Like the whole thing was a, just a giant clusterfuck. But um, the uh, but the, the, there was a kernel of what I was saying in a less hyperbolic way, which is just that you know CPU power matters. You you know doing right. games. I mean, people are like, oh, he called it we a piece of shit, but like look at his game. It looks like Sims One, and that's true. I mean, it won't always look like Sims One, but there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood. And so being able to do new game designs. Because games are a technological medium in the sense that, like, you know, interactivity is about the computer responding to what you're doing, it matters how fast the computer is. And right. I felt like we was underpowered. And so I was basically trying to say a relatively technical point about that. Um, 
but uh, it got lost in this insane explosion right. of PR and the insanity. whole the whole media praying thing. But to Nintendo's to Nintendo's credit, like when the Wii U rolled around, they recognized that Spy Party was a perfect Wii U game as well. Right, and they that's what I was going to say. Like, that no is the irony in all this is that after you said what you did about the Wii that got everyone's panties in a bunch, Nintendo doubled back and made a console pretty much for your game. <laughs> I mean, it's great. Like they were super cool about it. I mean, Dan Edelman, who's the main uh, like. Uh, um, not just the indie guy, but like kind of the digital distribution, like you know, independent developer guy, the eShop guy. He's super cool, and he's a big fan of Spy Party. And uh, yeah, I mean, they just they, they didn't hold a grudge or anything like that. It was just great. I mean, they you know they I, so I have a dev kit. I'll 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 put the game on it, and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. that, that's really good news for me because um, I have a Wii U, uh, and I actually quite quite enjoy it. The multiplayer experience is cool. Like uh, KY mentioned, the asymmetrical gameplay. Is something I'm excited to see. Like I, I don't, you know, I can do that online, but now I can do it kind of in my living room. Um, and I would love to give Spy Party a, ch a chance on the Wii U. So bring it my way, man. I'm ready for it. Definitely. Yeah, totally. I I'm dying to see what. I mean, it's gonna be. There's a, there's some design stuff there, like um, like what happens when the spy can see what the sniper sees. Like, that's obviously going to change the game a little bit. Um, but I think these are all totally solvable problems. I think it'll be really interesting to see. I can't wait to try it. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, KY, I'm, I think I'm done with my questions. Sure. Um, you know, if you have any other stream-related stuff, that's pretty much all I would have asked. Like, what do you think of the medium of streaming and all that? But, yeah, um, that I'm was sure going to be a big that. topic because uh, Chris actually is fairly new, or was new. When I got into the beta, he was new to the streaming, the idea of streaming, pretty much. Or at least that it's becoming so emergent. And all of a sudden, Chris is huge into pushing streams. Like, he set up a notifier for spy party streams that you can uh, get emails sent to you. He put it on the main, uh, the title page of spy party, like check out these streams. Oh, that's so great. So you've, uh, you've dove right into the stream thing. Yeah, it was actually, it was actually spy party, uh, you know, beta testers who kind of turned me onto it. Like, um, uh, you know, there's a guy who hangs out in the lobby. He's kind of basically furniture at this point. His name's zero TKA, TKA. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Zeratka because I don't support uh, um, uh, caps in, in usernames, but his his name's Zero basically, and and he was constantly uh, like in the lobby hanging out and also watching streams. And I'm like, you know, over the summer last summer, I was like, what's you know, what's what are you watching? Oh, I'm watching the Starcraft thing or this Dota thing or this LOL thing, and uh, and I started to realize, I mean, I you know, I had heard of Twitch and Justin TV and stuff like that before, but I kind of hadn't realized this summer was the summer of like realizing both the size of YouTube channels and the size of streams and how cool that was, mm -hmm. and and like they're just huge nowadays, especially for indie games, but for any game and especially for a competitive game, uh, uh, like Spy Party, like streaming is just great. Like I mean, you know, uh, for a game like The Witness or something like that, streaming is less cool because you don't want the game spoiled, right? If you want to play it yourself, although people love to watch spoilerable games too. Like it's just a, it's just an entertainment medium at this point. Sure. Um, but for a competitive game like Spy Party um, or Starcraft or you know uh, a MOBA or a fighting game or whatever, like it's just magical to be able to watch. I mean, like you know. And that's the whole reason that God, Blood Wolf uh, it doesn't want to put his streams up right now because he doesn't want anyone else to have an advantage and you know be able to see how he plays in the <laughs> tournament. And so it's just great, like being able to see how other people play. Because until I get spectation in, this is the streams are the way you see how other people play and learn new strategies and stuff. And so the community around that, it's just great. So with a notifier, what I wanted to do was, you know, Twitch has this thing. You know, for a game like LOL, it's no big deal. Like you know, there's fifty thousand people on there watching LOL right now. Um, <laughs> you can always find a game. But with Spy Party, you know, it's like people stream almost every night. But like it's not you don't know what time they start up or things like that. And if you're not following them, Twitch won't notify you. So I realized there's a kind of a missing feature, which is this idea that hey, I want to I want to follow based on game, not just based on people. And so I realized that I, I looked at their API, and uh, you know they have a web API like every other dot com nowadays. And I saw that you can actually query on game name, and so I wrote this thing that basically makes it so you can follow based on game name. Um, and I've actually shared it with a, another indie already. The Clay guys, the guys who did Market the Ninja and stuff, are going to set something up similar. Oh, um, cool. do, don't, don't, don't Starve is like a big thing on, on Twitch and, and mm -hmm. YouTube channels as well. Um, and so, you know, I'm not, oh, I'll, I'll totally just throw it up. I'll throw the source code up once it's all working properly and everything. They got the raw, raw version. 
Right. But yes, yeah, so you can just go to spyparty.com slash streams and you can see a live up thing there or you can sign up for email or sign up for the Twitter account that it also tweets out. And it, you know, it took me a couple of days to get this thing working and it like tries to not, you know, spam too much and it tries to um, you know, it gives it, it there's some settings for other things that the Twitch is missing, like you can put, you know, hash sign you know, pound test into your thing and it won't tweet your thing. It won't notify of your stream. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of small stuff that I noticed Twitch was missing. You know, when you're setting up a stream, you don't want to notify while you're setting it up. So you wait, you know, you can, you can control that via this thing. And so it's just cool. So I like, yeah, I mean, I took it far enough that like, oh, I mean, I don't think this will scale. Hopefully if we have, hopefully we'll have the problem where this is too, it'll be too much traffic on this thing. Um, not yet, but, uh, but, you know, lol, it would be, you know, a notification email going out every three seconds. But for <laughs> yeah. my party, it's like, you know, a few a night. And, like, it, it, helps, it helps both streams. It helps both uh, people wanting to find streams and streamers. Because, you know, you're some streamer and nobody follows you and you want to stream Spy Party. Now, all of a sudden, you've got, you know, a mail going out to hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, some of, some of which will be like, oh, hey, I'll go check out this stream. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of a win-win, actually. Um, and so, yeah, so streams are totally awesome. So, like, when, when, um, when KY joined and, you know, told me about Vine Sauce and I went, and there's like 450 people and I like joined the chat and they're like the questions are streaming by faster than I could actually even read them, <laughs> let alone answer them. I was just like, wow, this is just huge. It's a super awesome thing. Mm-hmm. And I did want to interject. The chat has been pretty good tonight. If you wanted to risk opening it and <laughs> seeing that uh, it, they've been pretty, they've been on their good behavior. And it's actually going by at a reasonable pace. If you wanted to check that out, of course, now that I said something, uh, <laughs> I'm jinxing it, but uh, yeah. that's, that's up to you. But anyway, yeah, no, I mean, I, I like I like when you're streaming. I join on sometimes and answer answer people's questions. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just I, if I'm going to try and concentrate on the answers, I don't think I can watch the stream. I have pretty bad ADD, and so if it's flowing by that fast, I think I'll get lost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on a side note, Chitango is apparently working on a slow chat. So mm-hmm. Twitch gets you know streams with like 1,500 people to 15,000 people sometimes, and their chat has a slow mode available, which we don't have currently. Um, but we might in the future. So that will only turn help. it on for like when it's really bad. Like I know exactly. when we mention it, some people, some people are like, "Oh, they're trying to you know slow down the chat all the time." It's like we just when there's 700 people, it wouldn't be a bad thing to have every once in a while. But yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's probably also <laughs> different when you're interviewing somebody versus just hanging out watching a game too. Yeah, yeah modes totally. And stuff. I think it's totally cool. It's just man, it's a lot of it's a lot of text to read. So it's cool that you're parsing through it for me. Well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna get out of this call now, but I want to thank you again, Chris, for supporting Vine Sauce for being such a accessible guy and for creating some ma- amazing stuff. And uh, you know, you'll always have a place here if you want to awesome. promote a product or just say hi. And cool. uh, you know, it's guys like you and Edmund McMillan that make streaming for guys like me and KY so much more worth it. And um, I'm just so grateful. And uh, you guys are doing great. Thanks again. And yeah, thank I'll you. catch you guys nice later. To you. You yep. too, man. Okay, see ya. All right, Bye. thanks, Vinny. So yeah, uh, just a little background. Vinny was Vinny was the one who headed up two parts of uh, Edmund McMillan interview. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I read that somewhere. But anyway, uh, I'd like to do some questions that people had some time and they put on the forums. Uh, some of them will be very quick. Some of them might take a bit of a longer answer. Why don't we hit a couple of these? Talk a little bit about that, and then just play one more set of matches. Cool. and uh, see what happens. So, I mean, I have plenty of user questions, so we could probably do a couple, then play a match, and then do a couple more. Okay. So, uh, first off, as an opener, this comes from Misanthrope, who is actually just accepted to the beta, and this is the guy who came up with that Panopticon idea <laughs> that I talked to you. <laughs> I, in. Have, I have some news about that at some point in the future. Well, there you go. This is the guy who came up with that and had me ask you. But uh, yes. he came up with an opener question, which is, what are you currently playing aside from Spy Party? Since that one's implied, um, yeah. The the uh, I, I I play Visual Studio more more than I play Spy Party, which is why I'm so terrible at my own game. Um, <laughs> the uh, the last game I played, so, I mean, I played uh, I played some CS Go when it when it you know mm-hmm. just to check. I used to be a big CS fan, um, and it turns out I'm terrible at that game now too. Um, uh, I played Thirty Flights of Loving recently, which we talked oh, about in the stream. Very yesterday. good, very good. Yeah, and then I said, like I said in the stream, Brendan Chung, who's the guy who does Thirty Flights and did uh, Gravity Bone and stuff, uh, is actually going to do some maps for Spy Party and hopefully like characters and maps and like a whole like Blendo game style like thing. Well, I mean, it's all still in the works, but uh, that'll be super cool because mm-hmm. his, his aesthetic is so awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, I've been looking at Clairvoyance. Have you guys seen this yet? Clairvoyance. Uh, it sounds familiar. 
Yeah, so it's uh, let's see, what's the URL? It's like gameofclairvoyance.com, I think. Let me check it out. Um, Game of Clairvoyance. Clairvoyance.com. Is that right? I'm sure your uh, chat's on it faster than me. Yeah, they probably, they're really quick with shit like <laughs> yeah, this. I usually it. So just, clairvoyance is, I'll mention I want to link something and they'll do it before yes, you can get it up. Exactly. So. So Clairvoyance is uh, I haven't I haven't actually played it yet, um, but I've been watching some of their streams. He's got a, it's actually not streams; it's a, a, a replay system built in because it's a Unity app. And so, and since it's a play by mail kind of Unity app, I mean, it's not actually by mail, but it's like you know that kind of turn based thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he can easily do this replay thing. So he's got Clairvoyance TV, which you can go watch matches. But it's basically a, like turn based, you know, control your robot combat. Oh thing. yeah, really I, cool. I, I did see this. I now remember because I remember seeing the post on IndieGames.com for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, that's Eric Svidung, Svidung, however you pronounce his name, um, who's a, a cool indie developer. He did um, that game Blueberry Garden that won the IGF a long time ago mm-hmm. and has done some iPad games and stuff like that. So that's a super cool game that I've been checking out. Cool. Um, Have you seen uh, Monaco? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, uh, I, so Andy and I shared uh, PAX Booth Space, the very first PAX mm-hmm. um, that we did. Um, so I've right, that's where, that's where The Witness had its own little TV yeah, thing. So with- yeah, and then we had John secretly <laughs> yeah. in the corner. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, so I've been playing some Monaco beta. That that's true. Um, and then I've been playing a little bit of Witness too. Witness is in very 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 closed beta. You have um, no idea how ridiculously jealous I am of that. But. <laughs> well, I won't say anything about it because that's a very spoilerable game, right? As opposed to Spy Party. It seems like sports. everywhere I look, there's uh, details. I guess um, withheld. Like even on that article yes. about the Death Jam, it's like you detailed your thing with highlights and lowlights. Yep. They detailed Mega Cure and Storyteller, and then under the Witness, it just says. Uh, not enclosed for spoilers. Something. Yeah, something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, so. so he sends out release notes. He sends out like beta notes uh, with fixes and stuff, and it's like redacted, fixed, and redacted. And you're like, <laughs> okay, whatever that means. <laughs> he, he, it's like his SCP project, if you know what yeah. that is. Yeah. Uh, the, I don't um, know if you do, but that's what, what the SC- witness is. What is SCP? SCP is essentially like a, a parody. It stands for Secure, Contain, Protect. It's like, it's like a parody... Uh, like shadow organization that keeps wraps under all sorts of different dangerous supernatural findings and in order to make it realistic yeah in order to make it realistic they'll put still they'll actually just blank out sections of their articles or say redacted here just to kind of make it feel that way so it kind of reminds me that's what the witness is it's like scp blow or something Totally. But, the, uh, you mentioned you mentioned mentioned Mega Curry and Storyteller, both of which are awesome games, which is why we invited them. Yeah, to I'm particularly well. excited for Mega Curry, but you were supposed to get uh, Journey, weren't you? Yeah, well, we had talked to. It was just too late. Um, it was they were just too far on to to actually be able to do anything. So, like the mm-hmm. idea of the Depth Jam is like you go for these four days and uh, and actually make you know, test out and make real changes to your game. And Journey it was just, we had, we had put off the idea for too long and then Journey right. was just too, cl- too close to the ship. But Genova was totally interested in doing it. Mm-hmm. It's just that uh, by the time we actually got our shit together on our end, like it was like they were already mm-hmm. almost shipped. So, yeah. Um, but Storyteller is totally awesome. You should totally check that out. Storyteller was... Um, That's the uh, one I probably book. know the least about right now. Like I know yes. about it, but I haven't done as much research with the other games. As yeah, with so the other it, games. it won the, the IGF's Nuovo Award, which mm-hmm. Nuovo is some made-up word that just means new and cool. Um, last year, and uh, it's super cool. So Danielle Benmergi, who's a Argentinian uh, kid, who um, a kid, he's like 32, but I'm uh, 42, so I can call him a kid. He uh, he came <laughs> and stayed with me after. You know, there's a, there's a community down there in Argentina, but it's not as as big, obviously, as a community here for indies. And so he came and stayed with me for three months last year, um, and kind of hung out with me and John, and like you know worked on Storyteller and right. uh, and, and Mark as well. And that's when the Death Jam actually happened. And Storyteller is super cool. It's a um, I have a game design idea um, in. in in that vein as well, but it's this kind of idea of this, like, you know, I mean, what it looks like is build your own comic strip, but what's really happening is it's a, it's a deep and interesting puzzle game, and so it's, it, you'll, it'll be, you know, there'll be like a map, like, you know, um, uh, a map, a level, you know, a, a strip that's basically like, you know, here's mm-hmm. three characters, and here's like, a, a, you know, um, one of them can be evil, and, 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 and there's some treasure, and then, you know, make a... Uh, um, Make the Maltese Falcon plot or something like right. that. You know what I mean? Out right, of this. Exactly. So it's like it's really interesting, cool, like kind of literary uh, thing, and it's just a really cool game. And it's cute almost like a too. puzzle game. Yeah, it's totally. It is a puzzle game. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a puzzle game about kind of character and story and plot and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, as opposed to just like you know. Um, 
uh, you know, this kind of, you know, uh, um, it's, 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 it's a puzzle game where the puzzles are very much what you're looking at, as right. opposed to, like, it's this random thing where I put the cat hair mustache on the whatever, right? Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, good. So, and, Mega, and Mega Curry is totally awesome as well. Oh it's God, really, yeah, I'm very really, excited for Mega Curry. I especially like that it's not just some, uh, I guess, arbitrary way of representing 4D, but there is some mathematical, I guess, uh, I guess, mathematical science behind what makes his 4D area 4D. And I yeah, think yeah, that's I mean, really he, he basically, cool. Basically, like all of his code is in 4D, like. So, you know, in math and in computer programming, like, you know, dimensions don't really mean much. Like, so you can have mm -hmm. a 2D game or a 3D game or whatever. And so he has a 4D game. And so everything <laughs> is 4D. He's like, he renders it in 4D. I mean, he projects it to 3D and then projects it to 2D. Oh, but it wow. is just, you know, all of his shaders are in 4D. So there's slices through these 4D textures. It's crazy. So, like, he's been spending all this time basically getting it, quote unquote, right. You know, in other words, right. instead of just like, I'll throw some textures on the side of this after it's in 3D, he's got, okay, this is actually a this slice. Is Right, he has an actual fourth dimension rendered out that he splices yeah. into things. For those that yep. don't know what Mega Curie is, very quick background, it's like you Flatlander. It. It's just like, yeah, M-I-E-G-A-Q-U-R-E, -E, like Reepa no, just said. K-U-R-E. K-U-R-E, sorry. Okay. It's just like what Reepa said. It's, it's kind of like Flatland, except if it were a 3D living person going into the four, fourth spatial dimension, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, so you can basically, like, um, the way they deal with it is you can rotate, you can display any three axes at a time. Um, you know, there's X, Y, Z, which we only live in, and then there's also W. Mm -hmm. And so you can just rotate along the Y axis, and you end up with X, Z, W. And so it's right. like this completely mind-bending thing when it happens, but there's all these amazing puzzles associated with it. Absolutely. All right, so let's move on to another question. Uh, Herpes asks, what's the story behind... Uh, choosing to go indie after your departure from Maxis. <laughs> the, well, so what quote happened? Quote unquote departure. This, I know. <laughs> what's that? Quote unquote departure. But yes. Well, yeah, I got laid off. So let's be clear about that. But the I would have laid me off too because I, I basically so after Spore, I told them I wasn't going to work on another game um, because it was kind of just too creatively painful for a bunch of the reasons that we talked about with Vinny. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it was incredibly like technically creative but the actual design aspect of it was just too painful so i was like i couldn't i couldn't do that again so what i told him i was like i will work on you know the same kind of tech stuff but i also had at the same time i had an exemption to my ip agreement with mm -hmm. ea that allowed me to work on games on the side which is cool it's to their credit they they saw you know they went along with it um basically when i started focusing when i gave up all the design stuff on spore and started focusing just on the on the on the animation system, um, mm -hmm. you know, a few years before we shipped, like this is 2006 or 2005 or something like that. Um, I basically was like, I need to be able to work on game design as well, but it's like too many cooks in the kitchen here. I'm not doing any good, you know, helping out on Spore. Right. Just getting away, you know, on, on the on the design side. And so I negotiated a exemption to my IP agreement that allowed me to work on indie games on the side, um, as long as you know I didn't use any EA equipment and blah blah blah, all the normal stuff, right? So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Um, and so that's where I resurrected Spy Party from the Indie Game Jam. I was like, oh, there's actually something here. And so I always kind of, like, I was, as soon as I, re when I realized Spy Party was pretty cool, mm -hmm. um, this is kind of at the start of the kind of golden age of indie, like, which kind of started in that whole, you know, Geometry Wars, Braid time frame. Right. You know, Castle Pictures. Um, and I was like, you know, I eventually want to go indie because I'm just, I just, I, I'm not a team player. <laughs> in some sense. Like, yeah. I, just, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do well in that environment. I, it's I, stifling yeah. to be just you know one person on a hundred person team or fifty or whatever it was on Maxis. Well, some people, yeah. I mean, it went between it went between it was like t ten or fifteen when I started, and it went up to a hundred and something. But like, it's it's not that it's not that I didn't have fun. It's not even stifling is maybe the wrong uh, word I wouldn't choose. It's, okay. It's more like, um, I just wanted to have control. Basically, I wanted the game to be good if I made the game good, not for right. all these other reasons, right? Like, I wanted if the game sells and people love the game, it's because uh, I did a good job. And if not, then, hey, I deserve it because my game sucked, right? Right, Whereas totally. Whereas with a big game like that, there's such a low-pass filter over it. Everything you do is smoothed out, right? Mm -hmm. So no decision is actually like... Um, you know, you're, you're sanding all, all of the prickly parts off the game because, like, it's gone through 15 producers and four designers and, like, you know, test and everything. Um, and the marketing people say, oh, it's got to be blue or whatever. It's just, the whole thing is no, no one person is evil in any of this, in, in, this, in this environment. It's just that that's what happens when you get a lot of people working on something. Right, totally. It's very hard to have this authorial voice, you know, 
shine through. Hey, so I mean, I'd want to go indie too after that. Totally. Yeah, I just wanna. I just wanted to live or die um, by or succeed or fail by my own game design. I wanted to see if I could do it. Right. Um, and it was such a great time too. Like going indie. I mean, even still, it's still a great time. Like it's amazing. Mm-hmm. The golden age of indie is kind of still. I mean, XBLA is kind of not moving the units it used to relative to you know um, the size of the installed base. There's a whole bunch of things you can complain about, but like Steam's amazing. XBLA is still really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's the iPhone. All of these different things, right? And so, um, uh, but back then it was like uh, it was just you know Braid had just come out, and you know I've been friends with John for years, and and uh, it just seemed like a great time. And so basically after I, I wanted to ship Spore because I didn't want to mm-hmm. give up on that, so I shipped Spore, and then I told him I wasn't going to work on another game, uh, but I'd work on technology. So what we did is the first thing we did with after Spore was. Uh, we uh, added asymmetry to the editor, so you could have like three arms on one side and two arms on the other. Mm-hmm. I guess asymmetry is kind of a theme in my work at this point. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, but uh, and then I was going to start to do Sporpedia search stuff um, because the search on Sporpedia was really terrible, and so you couldn't find anything. All those cool creatures were just kind of lost in this morass, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, I started to work on that stuff, and then like it was the end of the fiscal year or whatever, and like they needed to save money, and I was expensive, and I had told them I'm not going to work on another game, so they laid me off. And this was like September, um, uh, uh, I guess it's not end of fiscal, but you know it was like it was time to like you know they needed to cut some costs, mm-hmm. and I was I totally didn't blame. Them. I'm still friends with all the people who laid me off, even like um, uh, because I would have laid me off too. Like I mean, the games are how they make money, and I told them I wasn't going to make another game, and they have a lot of mouths to feed there. Um, the nice thing about it though is that like I was thinking at the time that what I would do is quit around January first, like turn of the new year. Right. This, I guess that would have been 2009. Um, cause I, uh, I think I got laid off in 2008 or maybe it was 2010 versus 2008. I can't even remember the year, but, um, uh, but who knows? I mean, it's nice to have a paycheck, right? So would I have actually quit? I don't know. Like hmm. I could work on spy party in my spare time cause I had a P exemption. Would I have, I don't know. And so like kind of the boot to the ass kind of made <laughs> me actually go, all right, I guess I'm doing this. Yes, I'm doing like, this. You know, That's the yeah. sign you were waiting for, I guess. Exactly. It's kind of sink or swim, like just thrown in the cold water and you better swim. Like, so it, it, it turned out it was a blessing in disguise. Um, right. Uh, it's kind of weird to lose your paycheck and everything like that, but I had plenty of savings saved up, and I I live pretty cheap, um, so uh, um, so it made me like okay, no, I'm really doing this, right? Which is great. Sometimes you get a little extrinsic uh, boot. Helps. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right, this one comes from a longtime viewer named Tense Condom, which uh, <laughs> is actually his name was used to be Ten Second Con- Ten Second Tom, and everyone started calling him Tense Condom, and it just stuck. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, Tense asks, what is more difficult, making a machine that acts like a human or being a human imitating a machine that is supposed to be human? <laughs> um, I mean, I try and meet in the middle for Spy Party, right? Like, it's, it's um, since I, so it's very, I mean, it's basically impossible. I mean, the whole reason Spy Party works is because it's, a f- it's an inverse Turing test, not a Turing test, right? Like, right. there's no way to make a human that, there's no way to make an AI that actually convinces, is convincingly human. So right. let's start there. Like, I'm already way on that side of the fence. Um, the, the, um, but at the same time, you don't, like, I don't want to try too hard. I want to make it, so basically the goal of I'm writing my AI is to make it, convincingly plausible behavior but mm-hmm. also make it emulatable by the spy like if i ha- if i could do something like as we see in the in the forums right now there's so many examples of where the npcs will have some behavior that the spy can't do and that's a tell you just start low lighting everybody who does that and eventually you get down to the spy right mm-hmm. it's exactly like zeros like hugging the uh, plant um pathing thing right and so um so my goal is actually I need to balance it out. I want to make the thing look like a party. You know, I want it to be a kind of compelling behavioral simulation of a party. Um, mm-hmm. That's you know um, thematically what's going on, and it provides all of the stuff like drinks. There's all these things that happen because it looks like a party. Yeah, um, totally. But at the same time, I need to make sure that anything that the AIs do, the NPC, the, the spy can do. Mm-hmm. And so it's just very much like this kind of this moving line in the middle somewhere where I try and meet them. Right. Um, so, for example, I have to make very careful when I'm making the code. Like, people are constantly finding things where I'm like, oh, right, I didn't do that right. That, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, there's all these bugs with like the briefcase behavior where it's like, okay, the spy can't emulate that. I didn't realize that that animation could blend over the top of having a drink. Okay, I got to go prevent that. So it's like constantly this kind of back and forth ping pong game inside the code. Um, like, for example, a, a really concrete example talking about the pathing. Pathing, mm-hmm. the uh, NPCs and the spy go through the exact same pathing algorithms. Um, so the spy, the spy controls 
like when you push forward on the W key, um, send a really short path down that goes then through the exact same like avoidance routines and stuff that the uh, that the um, that the NPCs use, and that mm-hmm. means that, that you know at the low level all the movement is exactly the same. But I didn't realize something. I used to have the, the NPCs adjust slightly in conversations to emulate, yeah. you know, and I realized. Uh, only after it was clear, you know, after some bug reports from some of the elite players, um, they were low lighting for it because the and the spy couldn't actually adjust in a small increment. So I was right, like, oh. they couldn't do it, and to the tiniest degree that the AI could. Right, and so I had to disable it basically until I can get until I can figure out how to add that to the controls mm-hmm. of the spy. I basically turned it off. Right. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's a that's a fantastic answer. It's definitely, like you said, a moving line. You have yeah, to yeah. you have to keep the AI uh, reasonable enough and making a good uh, simulation of the party, but it can't be so good that it couldn't possibly be mimicable by a human. Yeah, exactly. So when I do the new pathing system at some point you know, over the next decade, <laughs> uh, like it's going to be much smoother pass, but I need to make sure that it's easy to drive those smooth paths as a as a player as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, all right, uh, we'll do one more question, then why don't we play a few? Okay. Okay, so this one comes from, again, mind the the chat names of some of these people. Yes. <laughs> but this one's from Mick Fagort. Okay. Who uh, actually got to play Spy Party at EVO when you had it at cool. EVO. Uh, he wrote up a bit of a story about how him and his friends went to EVO and they loved the setup. They loved that it was just a landline, essentially, like two, computer, er, two computers hooked up with TVs yeah, back, back, to back to back. Right. Uh, when it comes down to it, his question is, will playing online be more viable due to playing strangers as opposed to playing friends locally where you have lots of time to figure out their patterns and you kind of go through the motions of what you know your friends will do? I mean, I think it's going to be very similar like the way a fighting game works, right? Where it's like... Um it's more fun to play somebody right in the same room that you know. Like it's just always going to be, you know, couch play or in this case, back to back play or whatever the appropriate word for it is. It's just always more fun. Um, it's it's sort of the pinnacle of funness, so to speak. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so for those people who have two laptops or a PC and a laptop or a Wii U or whatever, you know, whatever the the the, the same room, you know, eventually there'll be iPad and PC interplay and things like that. Um, the for the people who can afford that and who have that situation, that's going to be awesome, you know. Or, or maybe their local, like you know, um, uh, um, you know, their, their local game store will set up. I mean, we've got there's some guys who are setting up a, like a little two player spy party demo in a game store uh, mm-hmm. in Australia somewhere right now. Wow! Um, and so that's totally cool for that, right? Um, uh, but that said, like you know, I mean, you know, if you want to. At the elite level, it's going to be online play just because of the likelihood that you're going to have two elite players who are in the same room, except, right. at, a convention, except at a convention, is just not going to happen. You know, exactly. Not going to happen. exactly. And so it's kind of like you're going to have to, like, you know, you, in fighting games, you know, you go play at your club for a little while, and if you're the best person there, eventually you've got to drive farther and then mm-hmm. farther, you know, and then eventually you're, going, you're showing up at Evo. Um, and <laughs> with Spy Party, it's, you know, luckily, unlike a fighting game, like, uh, Spy Party is very latency tolerant, so it works really well over the internet. Um, you know, uh, you can run the sniper machine a second behind the spy machine. With uh, mm-hmm. you, you can play somebody in Australia with no problems whatsoever. Um, right, I've still got some bugs to work out there, but like basically, theoretically, and in practice, when I've when I've when I've uh, when I've rejiggered the numbers, like you can play with a huge amount of latency because there's not that much coupling between the two because it is so asymmetric, mm-hmm. and so um, that means that it can play. And the other thing is it plays. Uh, uh, it, there's no real advantage for mouse and keyboard versus uh, controller. There's some right. slight advantage with aiming as the sniper or whatever, but it's not a game-changing advantage. It's the way mm-hmm. it is in a shooter, right? Totally. I mean, it would just take a, a little that, bit of adjustment time, and it would be right on par. Yeah, I mean, it's like the, the, your aiming is so rarely... Your aiming speed is so rarely what gets you the win as mm-hmm. sniper that it's almost no... You know, it just doesn't... It doesn't right, it's not, a, it's not a Twitch-based game, so therefore yeah. it doesn't have any bearing on things. Yeah, and so there's a reason that they don't hook up mouse keyboard players with controller players for shooters, right? Because like it'd just be a bloodbath. Um, mm-hmm. But but the uh, but with for Spy Party, I hope to have console and PC play. Um, I would love to have consoles play each other, but the console vendors don't like that idea. But I've gotten both of them to agree that having like you know. XBLA to Steam play is a possibility, and so that'll be totally awesome. Since there won't be any advantage or disadvantage, I can just like Shadowrun did that, but they had to nerf the mouse keyboard so badly right. uh, to make com- com- fair. But I won't have to do that at all. Like, there's plenty of people in the beta who play with a controller, and plenty of people who play with a mouse, and it's just a pre- preference thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And so, uh, so I'm super excited about that. So, but, but, but yeah, I mean, I think that to get, it's going to be a good online play game because it's so latency tolerant, um, mm-hmm. and hopefully it'll be on enough platforms that you can always find a game. But uh, but yeah, it's always more fun to play with your friends in a back to back thing. So if you've got two laptops, uh, yeah, definitely play that way if you can. Just mm-hmm. watch out for the mouse clicks. To get right, shot. of course, they'll give you away. Uh, good. So why don't we play a couple rounds because we've been cool. talking for quite a while. All right. So uh, my stream was down for a while. I don't know. Twitch freaked out, um, but it's back up now. If people want to watch the other side of this match, so it's Twitch TV slash Spy Party. Yep. Um, but it's been up for a little while. Uh, you've got audio of this whole thing, right? So we can yes, yeah, I've cool. got everything. It's I can just send you the file or whatever. Yeah, we can figure uh, it out just in YouTube or whatever. Yep, we'll figure it out. Okay. So I guess I will go spy. Let's do uh, what map you want to do. Uh, we could do. Uh, I don't think we've done any classic ballroom yet. I know. I was just gonna say that we could just. It's just ballroom. so unusual. Um, and I'll do. How about I'm gonna give pick a little love because I almost never do pick anymore. Yeah, pick. Go pick. Uh, Four or five. See. That's hard. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the one that you actually uh, mentioned on the blog once. That's just too sniper heavy right now. Right. Yeah, well, so we originally used to play pick three or four, and then for some reason, just the way internet fashion works, all the beta play testers started doing four or five, and I, there was no sniper bias for a really long time, and I was like, what's going on with people? And then finally the snipers caught up, and then it just started dominating. I was like, why are you guys playing this, this mode? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so the game's not up, hang on. That was when the move to A, four or five, or, or, or pick three or four happened. All right. All Let's right. Seduce, are you ready? Yep. Yeah. It's kind of funny, too, because when I first joined the beta, it seemed like pick was the standard. It seemed like everyone picked pick, and then now it's everyone picks any. Yep. But, yeah, I'm ready. I mean, there's, a, there's a very slight difference, right? Because, you know, it's basically the idea of the spy. You're locked into to, a mission, basically. Yeah, spy having to choose ahead of time. So there's more meta in pick, by mm-hmm. far, I think. Um, but, uh, um, but opportunistically. So it's just another... I, I, I want to have a whole bunch of ways to handicap the game, right? Because it's such a skill-based game. It's so intensely... Like, the skill cliff is so harsh that I wanted to make sure that there were a lot of uh, knobs to turn to get balanced games. And so pick versus any, mm-hmm. I'm fine with it. You know, it, it just floats whatever people feel like doing. Right. Eventually, it'll be a matchmaking system that'll suggest games. Like, hey, I think you oh, should do, cool. you know, either pick... Pick three or four, or any four or five. Let's say those are close. Yeah, and I can see that being dynamic, too, because like after a couple of rounds with a newbie that I'm mentoring, I might say, oh, well, you've been struggling to complete your missions. Why don't we just lessen it to any three out of four, or yeah, any so- three out of five? So yeah, I can totally I even- see the matchmaker being dynamic and kind of adjusting yeah. it as the matches go on. Well, and I can see different algorithms for mentoring versus uh, regular play. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, peer-based play, because, like, mentoring, I think, is a special thing. So, like, you know, oh, this person seems weak on this mission, so maybe I suggest that the, men- it, it, the matchmaking mentor system could suggest, hey, make sure you uh, make him, you know, you know, make sure he mixes in double agent with it yeah. or whatever. cool. I can cool. see all kinds of cool stuff to do there. All right. Are you ready? I am ready. Do it. Let's do it. All right, that's two missions down. Yes. Okay, so three, one, one, and... Oh, you're unlucky on those statues at the back there. Okay, Is that you need to be so? Quiet. You need to be quiet with your uh, with your mouse, so it doesn't give me any tells. <laughs> How do you know I don't have a second mouse? Yes, or have a second mouse. What are you doing? Pick four or five. All right, so you've already chosen what you're gonna do. Yeah, I can hear your mouse. I'm gonna have to like. I'm going to move the thing away from my ear. Oh. I could also, well, eh. Here, I'll just move the thing away from my ear because it was really silent. Um, okay, I was trying to be quieter with that one, but. Uh, all right, this may be a mistake because I was moving my headset at the time. <laughs> I just moved it off my ear, so hopefully I can't hear the clicks anymore. Okay. I can hear you talk, but I can't hear the clicks. <laughs> I'll keep my mouse far away as well. Yeah. All right, I think this is not fair, but I think this is you because I think I heard you I heard, heard control surfaces. Let's find out. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay, yeah, so, so that's why have, it does make mute. See, this is what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> so deadly. Yeah. Especially at like at, at competent level play, where it's like I hear I, I, you hear a noise. So I basically totally uh, knew that was you because I heard a control surface, like either it was you moving your mouse or, or a key or something. Right. And I saw somebody move at right that instant. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just so, it's just such a death trap. I could also switch to my headset mic while the stream mic is still the good one. So on Skype, it'll use my headset mic and you won't be able to hear my my clicks and stuff as cool. nearly as easily, if at all. And then the stream will still have the high quality microphone. Okay, let's try, uh, let's try, um, uh, uh, let's try a couple uh, courtyards to make sure that's true. Okay. So let me switch to headset mic. Do you have like a pro Skype. mic for the uh, streaming? Yeah, well, not really pro, but definitely a better mic than my headset mic. Oh, you disappeared. Hopefully you'll come back soon. Hello? Hello. You can hear me? Uh, yeah, you're really quiet, though. Can you turn the gain up on that or not? Let me see. This mic is Actually, had, very, uh, very I had poor. I Skype turned down, so let me try that. This mic is also oh. really poor, which is one of the reasons why I needed a different mic, because the one I'm talking into right now is just very... It doesn't yeah. pick pick up anything, but oh, it's here really we go. Crappy mic, but it this should be better. Here. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, yeah, it okay, turned click. off my boost for some reason. All click right, so mouse. click your mouse. I've been clicking. Oh good, so yeah, I can't hear it. Cool, perfect. Good, so we'll stick with right. that. Yeah, you want to go do over? Uh, sure. Might as well. All right, wait. Oops, you're a spy here. So now uh, my clicks will not give me away, and we can still. Uh, trick yeah, each other trash. out there yes. yeah and trash talk our, our trash talking is at a pretty low level i can't i can't wait until there's like people who have the expert level trash talk it'll be really interesting to hear what's going on mm-hmm. people are just starting to try it now now that people have set up a team speak server there we go okay yeah, can, i can't hear i can't hear clicks at all so that's good wonderful so it's perfect okay you ready yep all right wait is the same uh oh four of six all right that'll be so i made it a bit more yep. balanced i guess yeah, probably. Although, who knows? I think you're better than I am, so we'll see what happens. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, so I've got to watch everything. All right, here goes. All right, so we got uh, 211322, I think. Yep. 211322. Did you manage to rush the bookshelf while I was memorizing the statues? Maybe. Like a good spy? Maybe. Let's highlight her just in case. <laughs> oh, that was a little too obvious. <laughs> oh, I thought you were on the other side. Okay, so now I lost. I lost very quickly and legitimately. <laughs> yes, I like. I anything. like to do that trick a lot. I like to go to the window and do a walking bug with my back turned to the ambassador because I feel That's like good. a lot of times the sniper is watching from the front windows. In which yep. case, my arm is parallel and they don't watch someone with their back turned to the ambassador yep. for a bug. But yeah, this time it did not work. So yes, bravo. Awesome. All right, my turn to guy. Mm, should I do the same or should I? Uh, Up to you. Whatever you want. Whatever you feel like. We'll just play the same, just because. Hey, <laughs> Anon two five nine two says, "Don't tell him your strategies." Duh. <laughs> uh, all right, now I got to eliminate some missions here. But uh, see, me telling him my strategy makes him more likely to do that strategy subconsciously. Totally. So it's also a subtle level of manipulation on my part, of course. The Yomi. The of Yomi course. Way down. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, man, pick. God, you gotta actually like think, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's been so long. All right. Um, yeah, pick is definitely. I felt a lot more pressure that time because I knew I didn't have that degree of freedom to work within. Yeah. Yeah, that was the plan, yeah. Oh, but you think I'm doing everything. All right. Yeah, I have to watch for everything. All right. So, go nuts. Here we go. All right, statues, 221 and 113. Hmm. And I know your favorite character, so. Do you? No, I don't. <laughs> Zero probably does. You do have, isn't it snaps, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I forget. Hmm. Interesting. No, I can hear my mouse clicks, and I'm totally nervous about them. <laughs> no, I can't hear them, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I have a pretty shitty headset mic on, too, so we'll be okay. 
Oh, wait, he has a book? When did that happen? Ooh, I'll have to watch him. Shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Only totally spies scared. read. Clearly. I guess Toby's not the spy. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that was a misplay. Oops. 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 Bang. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> And that short distance walked. Hmm. That couldn't have been real. Both the DAs were out of conversation, I think. I'm playing I'm playing terribly, let's be clear. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think... There you are. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I'm playing so terribly, there, there's nothing I'm going to do. I'm just going to, like, while I talk to him, I'm going <laughs> to pull this microphone out and yeah. play. I saw, it, I saw the hand go down for those of you who missed it. But I'm finding a lot of times recently that if I highlight everyone who immediately hits either shelves or statues like probably four out of five no not four out of five like uh five out of seven games end up one of those people are the spy yeah i can believe like it. it's I mean, people so are... common to hit one of those things so early that if i just highlight everyone that hits one of those early yep. usually one of them ends up being the spy in this case you were the first person i highlighted yeah i don't even remember where i went first where did i go oh uh uh or it might have been skirting towards the ambassador because i like to highlight for that as well Oh yeah, I had this totally clumsy, like, I th was this the game or was it the last game where I had the totally clumsy? No, I think I had the totally clumsy miss bug and I didn't even succeed in bugging. It was yeah, terrible. that happens. This, sometimes. this is a farce. This is farce. Yeah, and a lot of times if people try to take control of the AI in mid walk, they'll kind of have some funny pathing things. Like, especially if they're going to try to rush an ambassador and they take control mid walk, I find a lot of times I'll notice one person suddenly skirt from their path in order to get closer to the ambassador. Yep. So that's like an instant highlight for me. Yeah. All right, good match. All right, let's go again. Let's go again. Switch. Are there any maps that we haven't done? Courtyard two, I don't think. Or did we? Oh no, we mixed. We did both courtyards. Or yeah, we did do one? both courtyards. But let's do one more ballroom. Okay. Or one more set in ballroom, whatever you want to call it. What's sure. up, six volt? It was four six p four six p. Yeah. I was asking someone in the chat, someone whose oh. name is six volt. Oh. But he forgot his question, so it's okay. Damn. Um. Well, let's see. We just save some questions for when we do this after open beta too. Yeah, I mean there are, there are entire <laughs> topics that I intended to hit. Like I wanted to talk a lot more about mentoring and how the community's gonna change in after yeah, open totally. beta. So I mean, I That's guess perfect. when that time comes, we'll already be able to uh, cont uh, contrast and compare. Yeah, and so. we can talk about the new environment art, which we haven't shown yet. Ooh. That'll be cool. Yeah, and the microtransactions for weather that you're yes. gonna Im implement. Yes, hats. This is a t these two Santa hats are a taste of the free hats, but man, wait, wait once <laughs> I start charging for them. All right, you can ready? decorate your spy any way you want. It totally yes. won't ruin the game. It'll totally. be it's that kind of mindset. Well, I, was thinking, I was thinking, like, you know, my daughter's in fourth grade, and you know how, like, in grade school, it's like, if you're going to bring a treat, you have to bring one for everybody in the class. And so Yeah, it's going to be the same way for hats. You can't even yeah, put a hat on a character till you've bought one yes, exactly. for every character. You have to character. buy 30 hats. It's like <laughs> cupcakes in, high, in preschool. There All you right. go. You ready? Yep. Okay. I had to remember for a second which missions I yes. picked because I was contemplating if I should rush. Usually I don't 
some people decide what they're going to rush like right away like before they're even in game which kind of like boggles me because sometimes it's so inconvenient to rush certain things I usually wait and see what's going on. Yeah, you want to like even with pick, you want to like opportunistically do stuff. That was one of the crazy things. There's a, a player called named Bucks, ages ago. Um, he doesn't play anymore, but uh, he was like the top of the leaderboard for a while. Played like 60 hours, mm -hmm. um, really early, and uh, um, and he was talking about his strategy on a stream. On a, it wasn't streaming back then. It was uh, um, uh, YouTube videos mm -hmm. and. He was saying, oh, he tries to, you know, instead of following the double agent or whatever, he tries to anticipate the flow of the party. And I was just like, that just blew my mind. <laughs> that, yeah, that's so crazy. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. So he wants to be where the ambassador is going to show up or where the, you know, and I was just like, oh, man, I'm not at that level. So I'm watching his laser very closely, get an idea of where he's looking and where he's not. Yeah, I tend to put, I just tend to just move my laser out of the view or out of the, you know, out of the room. Uh, yeah, I know some people highlight. are really, really, uh, they're very, very on top of whether or not they're being seen. Like some people will like never let <laughs> the laser point at anything that they're not directly, right. I guess, uh, that they don't want to highlight or low light. I think I'm tunneling. Well, that's good news for me. Yeah, unless it's the right person. <laughs> yep. I was tunneling on the wrong person. Who are you tunneling on the red dress? Yeah. Damn. Man. Nice one. Uh, someone in chat asked, "What do you have plans for the soundtrack yet?" Uh. Uh. I have big plans. I don't know what those <laughs> plans are yet, but I have big plans. I mean, I like the. I. Yes and no. I don't have any concrete plans. I've been just focusing 100% on the gameplay and then the other 100% on the new art, you know, now that I've got John working with me. But I, I want to have an awesome soundtrack. I just need to figure out. I mean, there's like, you know, I want to have make sure the audio tells are all correct and everything like that. So there's, a sa there's like the sound effects and then there's the music. And what I would like to do, and I don't know if this will work, but what I would like to do is have a band at the party playing. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. So like, you got missions yeah, with the band. Yeah, like a jazz ensemble, and then like you know they get up and then go around the party for a while, or who I, I don't even know what the right thing or at a club. So like the music dep depends on the level. The problem with that is if people like different kinds of music, like I don't want them to like. But you can always mute it. I don't know. So I, I've just got vague ideas like that. I think having a band at the party would be super awesome. Uh, has Mr. Hecker considered thrash metal for the soundtrack? Yes. There's a skate park where we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I like I don't want to like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I don't want to have like music. One of the interesting thing about music is that it date it can easily date the thing. So you know, um, you know, you like listen to the 
the difference between the new and the old Mission Impossible soundtrack and things like that. Right. Uh, and so I got to be really careful because I want that timeless. I want right. That I was going to say you kind of need a timeless soundtrack to kind of match the timeless style of the art. Yeah. So All right. So one more match, and then we'll just maybe hit up the rest of the user questions and do our little uh, giveaway shindig, and that should be okay. good. Yes. Awesome. Uh, okay. So I have to remove. I need to. Res- I need to. I need to save myself here. Like. So like I said, guys, we're gonna do a promotion in just a little bit where we're gonna w- give away a couple of, uh, I guess, keys, so to speak, into the closed beta. Even though open beta is just around the corner, it's a little redundant, but I figured, what the heck. Uh, so make sure you have a Vine Sauce forum account when that time comes, and I'll explain the rules when we get there. Yeah, and the, the, they're giving away invites, actually, because I actually literally do not have a way of making free accounts, and I apologize profusely because it's kind of cheesy to give away accounts that or give away invites that you then have, end up having to pay for. By right, yeah. But it sounds like Vinny's covering the cost, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, actually, it was the donations of the people. Like, oh, everyone, awesome. we have a donation page, but every single dollar of donation goes directly back to the viewers, like, in regards to game giveaways, promotions, things like oh, that. super cool. Yeah, the internet is so awesome. The communities and stuff. Like, it's mm-hmm. really great. Okay, uh, now I have to pick missions. Um, pick swap. Yeah. Definitely. That's like my well. I mean, I guess that's the riskiest mission in general. But um, something about statues resonates with me, so it works. You're an appreciation. You have an appreciation. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right. You ready? I am ready. Let's do it. Now I'm gonna ignore the statues. I know you didn't pick it. Yeah. Totally. Why would I pick statues? Three. And you probably didn't go straight to the shelves, but I'm going to do it anyway. After we just talked about that. Right, yeah, after we just talked about how I highlight all those people. Yeah, so why would I ever do that? Yeah. Hmm. You found me yet? I think so. I'm quite sure.
Uh, oh wow okay look at the it's, i had you highlighted at one point look at my in, wait maybe at my i didn't use at the very bottom 99 percent. <laughs> wow but so will only have been wait no it would have been the fourth mission so you're one yeah. percent chance from uh going into overtime and i would have shot the wrong person too because i thought i saw a purple dress walk through conversation i thought i saw uh, what else did i think i see i thought i saw a couple things so i was tunnel visioning a little bit but I didn't highlight you once, actually, so nicely done. 99%. It's mocking. Good me. thing I did not shoot, that's for sure. Yep. It's good. It's good. You don't have an itchy trigger finger. Yeah. Very important. Wow. So tense. <laughs> anyway, so let's okay. hit up just a couple more questions from okay. uh, the forum, and then we'll save the rest of uh, the discourse for the next interview. Awesome. Sound good? All right. So let's see here. I definitely have a lot of questions. Here's a good one. Mr. Oso asks, what was it like to work under Will Wright? Is he a grand king like I've always imagined? <laughs> <laughs> Will's totally awesome. Um, he, uh, uh, I mean, he's just a fun guy to hang out with. He's a great, you know, like creative guy. The, uh, I, I will, I'll criticize Will Wright just because it's a funny kind of criticism. He's so good just in this one way. One of the things you have to watch out with if you work for Will Wright is that his like verbal, rhetorical, like, Kung Fu is so strong <laughs> that you would see people would come into the office and uh, and with a totally reasonable like piece of feedback or a good suggestion or something like that and Will would like flip them around and by the end they'd walk out smiling with a completely different opinion and he was almost too good at it right so there'd be someone who'd come in with like you know I think A might be broken he'd be like shoo, 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 and they'd come out like man A is the best thing ever <laughs> and so I was like Will you gotta be careful with that much power rhetorical power because you're gonna like you know you're gonna, you're gonna end up having uh, surrounding yourself with people who like uh, have just been like basically hypnotized by you he was wow. so good at it but yeah That's no, he's super funny. smart yeah, he's 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 super smart and cool. Uh, I kind of wish he was making uh, game games still. Right. Uh, he uh, there, there there was like I just there's so few people in the game industry who like are like you know kind of the visionary like you know big crazy like like Vinny was saying Spore or you know that kind of thing. Um, uh, that it's kind of a bummer that like he kind of got bit by the like transmedia blah blah you know whatever. So I mean we see each other when we go to lunch. You know he, his office is nearby here, and I'm still good friends with him and everything like that. But like mm -hmm. I just wish I could mind control him with my rhetorical kung fu to make him work on a like actually hardcore video game. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Uh, two more questions, and then that should be good. Um, or three, if that's okay. I mean it's all yeah, up to fine. you. I mean so. Yeah. Uh, Here's the one uh, from Ikeluso, however you say that. How will you make update the current graphics to make them how you would like them and like them to be, meaning how are you going to implement it at this point? And what was your inspiration in making this game into the one we all watch, enjoy to watch and play today? Okay, so, well, the first question is, uh, assuming everyone's seen the new art, the new character art, which you just go to the blogs, by mm -hmm. and Yep, and, and it's, show, it's showing on yeah. the stream right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, the the the... So John is working on those are what are called high poly count characters. They're like you know very detailed and like hundreds of thousands of polygons. Like, um, and so what John's working on right now, uh, we did the environment. Uh, um, uh, we did the like environment. Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, like art style stuff. This, in the same mm -hmm. way that we did those characters, as really high poly, just to figure out what the art style was going to be. We've done the same thing for the environments, which we're not going to show yet until we've got the beta open, because I like, cool. need to stay stay focused here. Um, right. Um, but then as soon as that's open, we'll show the new environments, which are so sweet. They look basically like the delta from the characters that you see the new characters to these old uh, um, characters is about the same for the environments. So like, oh man. Imagine the difference from the veranda or ballroom to the you know the same delta. That's um, wonderful. So they're crazy good. He's John's the most amazing artist in the history of the world. Um, the uh, I'm so lucky to have gotten him. Um, the uh, so so he's done that, and now he's making low polygon count characters for in game real time characters for all the for the five characters that he's done. And so what we're going to do the very first thing we're going to do. So the goal is, and I, I really hope we make this because it's embarrassing if we don't. But the goal is to have one new environment and and five and the five characters in by next PAX, PAX West. So end, wow. of, end, end of August, right? So our uh, beginning of September. And so what that means is, uh, since, since there's only five characters, um, 
we're going to do texture swaps to make it up to 10 characters, right? So in, so in the same way that all the dudes in, this, mm -hmm. in, in the current art are all just the same with different textures, we're going to do that and just double. So we have 10. So we'll have a, ball, you know, a balcony size or a little, maybe a little bigger than balcony size map. It'll be some new map. Right. Um, uh, with the, with ten new characters in it, meaning five real new characters, and then just some simple texture swaps, different colored dresses, different colored hair, you know that kind of thing. Um, so that'll give us ten characters enough to do some gameplay with, and then I'm going to put it in on the side of the existing stuff because the existing stuff is all tuned, right? So mm -hmm. it's you know it takes a long time to get to this level of tuning, and it'll be even more tuned by then. So um, so I don't want to screw any of that up. So we're not gonna I'm not gonna uh, remove any of these maps. I'm just going to build all the new stuff by the side of it. Right. Um, so these guys will be in there for a long time. And so until we're confident enough that like, yeah, the new stuff is better, you know, than the old stuff was, um, it's going to stay in there. So hopefully by PAX, we'll have a map with 10 dudes and uh, one map, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll see how that goes. So basically there's just a ton of graphics programming stuff that uh, um, to do. John's got to make low polygon count characters. He's got to do all new animations, obviously. All the new characters are all going to be totally custom skeletons for every character because mm -hmm. that's the way to get the highest quality. I don't know any game who's ever done this, but of having like 30 characters all with totally custom skeletons. It's going to be insane. It's going to be so much work. Wow. But it'll have that total bespoke feeling where every, you know, right now you can kind of see, like, I don't know if you what's on your screen right now, but on my screen is like, uh, you know, just the end, the uh, the the results screen but you can see like the girl's shoulders like the thin uh small girl's shoulders are up really high when it's talking and that's because it's playing the same animation on her that is playing on like right, Peter exactly. Johnson, right exactly. and so it totally distorts it scales it down a little bit but it's just the wrong shape so you know you want the skeletons and and, and in the new art there's going to be like you know a Miss Marple character, an old dowager like lady. There's gonna be a character in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, you know, fat guys, thin people, like everything. Oh and man, so, it's gonna be so interesting playing spy in a wheelchair. Yeah, I mean, I, I I figure you'll move slower, but you're low and kind of behind people. So who knows? I mean, we'll see what happens. I have no idea. But yeah, I it's gonna I, be the odd job of yes, spy party. I I want it to be like. Uh, in some sense, the most diverse game ever. Like, you know, b basically, you know, gender wise, race wise, ability wise, um, it's just going to be crazy because all of these characters will be playable, right? So, like, in a normal game, you know, you've got your Space Marine with a sidekick. And, <laughs> and here it's like the old lady with the walker is just right. as good a spy as Jim Bondo is. So, right, really exactly. Great. To um, it's great. have just like this representation of people, just much a much broader representation than most games have ever had of just people. Awesome. All right. Uh, just well, Sean, I really like your question about mentoring in the community, but I'm gonna save it for next time because that's a whole spiel that I want to talk about in depth when we have more time. Uh, so I'm gonna save that for next time uh, if Sean is in chat. So let's end with a simple question, and you've probably gotten this before. But why was banana bread chosen as the code word? <laughs> the, the uh, well, I came up with the idea for the double agent mission where I was like, okay, so I want a mission with a soft tell, an audio tell, right? Mm -hmm. That only allows you to be deductive, like it allows you to like low light people who aren't in conversation or whatever. And I was sitting there programming. Um, and I needed a code word, and I was sitting in there eating some banana bread, literally, that a friend of mine who works at Valve now, uh, who used to work on Spore, he, he had baked some banana bread, and he had given me a slice of bread. And so I'm sitting there, I'm like, munch, munch, what am I going to, uh, what's the code word? And so finally, <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, I'm holding this banana bread. And all I did was I picked up my cell phone and just turned on, you know, audio record, and that's why it's so crappy quality, and, uh, <laughs> um, and just said banana bread into it and now it's kind of a theme um, right so I it's kind of like almost like a meme like a spy party yeah. meme if there was yeah. one i mean somebody did a remix of like the whole uh you know manamana song with right. banana bread and banana bread it. yeah so i mean i guess it, it's going to have to be banana bread for out throughout the history of the game i mean i don't see how i'm going to be able to change that <laughs> well i think it'd be nice to have a couple of uh, like alternatives like i'd love to see swordfish just as uh i guess um a marx brothers reference but, well, the, um, the, there's a question about whether it can actually be a voice when it's like a gendered. Once you start having real voice acting and stuff in the game, for oh, that's like, true. Talk, it's like, it does it? I mean, it can't be the voice of the character doing it. Obviously, that's a total death sentence. So, like, is it going to be some more abstract, like little cough or like a, a, a whisper? Sometimes, you know, whispers don't have as much gender associated with them. So you can say like mm -hmm. banana bread, and you can't right. really tell if it's a girl or guy. So it might be something like that. So we'll see. Right. I don't know. But uh, right. I, 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 the community should know I respect the power of banana bread. <laughs> and will not throw it away lightly. All right, everyone in chat wants you to recreate the banana bread. Like, say it in the exact tone and style. Like, give us a live uh, double agent <clears throat> contact right now. 
All right, let's see if I can do it. You guys will have to, the, the chat will have to tell me whether it's correct. All right. Ready? Yep. Banana bread. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was unbelievably perfect. Like, I gotta say, that was to a T. It sounded like it was the game. No joke. like shooting someone? That was really good. That was very good. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Well, something, one of, the, one of the elite players wanted me to, like, be in TeamSpeak at one point <laughs> and, like, do that while they're playing. Just do that life. intermittently, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, good. And then one more from me, and this is kind of just like a silly thing from the last interview. But um, when Edmund McMillan was interviewed here, he, uh, he, we mentioned that he's a really big Melvins fan, and he said, if you guys could get us in contact with the Melvins or, or get me backstage, I will love you forever, et cetera, et cetera. Sooner, soon enough, Herpus McDerpus from our chat actually got in contact with the Melvins and hooked him up and got him backstage. Ah, that's awesome. So, I had to ask if there was one thing that Vine Sauce could do for you, like anything, and we'll doesn't matter if it's unrealistic. We'll try to figure something out. If there's one thing that we could attempt to do for you, is there anything? Wow, one thing. This is like the Make a Wish Foundation, but I yeah. don't have to die at the end of the it. Vine, the Vine, Vine Make a Wish Foundation. Let's oh do it. man, one thing. Like anyone thought- you want to meet or talk to, or who knows what. Right, I feel like it should. Uh, um, I feel like it should give back to the community because you know when you're given that much power, it's like <laughs> I don't know, like um, uh, you could have. How about how about uh, how about um, one of the big like casters like Day Nine or something like that cast a spy party game. Wait, say that again? Sorry, someone was... Having one of the big, like, StarCraft or, or LoL okay. casters cast a spy party To cast game. a spy party that'd be, game. That'd be pretty crazy. Absolutely, we're on that'd it. That would be fun for everybody, too. We're on it. Awesome. So, awesome. So, we're going to do a little... I mean, unless there's anything else you want to talk about, I think we've been running for about two hours, 20 minutes now. Yeah, since we, since we said we were going to just do an hour this time. Yeah, time really goes quick. So, let's do our promotion. So, right. uh, I, let me link the thread that your guys are going to be posting in. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to be playing Sniper, and Chris will be playing Spy. He's going to do known six, meaning he has to do his missions. Like, every single one. He's probably going to be obvious, at least to a trained Sniper. Here's what you're going to do if you want to get a copy of Spy Party. Uh, Basically, I'm going to play normally. I'm not going to commentate. I'm just going to highlight, uh, low light, look at things from various angles while Chris plays. You guys guess who you think is the Spy. The are you first... gonna highlight? Are you gonna highlight who you'd highlight, or just in response to banana bread, like low lights and stuff? Um, what do you think I should do? Well, I mean, if they're gonna play, you're, you know, if they're gonna play, you shouldn't highlight based on your hunches. Okay, probably. then for just for objective things like banana bread, I'll low light anyone out out of conversation. And it's also their thing, like them posting their result is kind of like their bullet. They only get one yeah. chance. Any edited posts are disqualified for obvious <laughs> reasons. Um, so the earlier you do it, the more likely you're going to get in simply because it's the first three people to do it, but you have to get it right. So it might benefit you to wait and be completely sure. Does that make sense? Okay. So, Uh, so basically, uh, Chris is going to be, do known six spy, meaning he's going to do all of his missions on ballroom. You guys post in that thread who you think it is, either describe them like skin color, gender, weight, height, and the clothes they're wearing, like the, everything so we don't get confused. Or even okay, just take a screenshot of them. Do you think I should turn my stream off for this? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to stop my stream then. All right. So again, I'll link the thread one more time. Square Push got it. A couple other people got it. Make a form. Uh, basically, post who you think it is based on what happens. I'm just gonna look around at things from different angles, and um, that's pretty much it. Again, be descriptive. Don't say just green dress because there's a couple green dress. Say, say skin color, gender, weight, or gr- green uh, polka dot or plaid dress. Yeah, or... yeah. Just make sure that you're very descriptive, or take a screenshot. That works too. Okay, so the first three people to get it right will get into the beta. Sound good? All right. Sounds fine with me. Are they cool with it? I think they're cool with it. Any questions before we start? Once again, edited posts are disqualified instantly. You get one bullet, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no clip. It's the one. It's the one with the face. Yeah. The, yeah. The funny thing is, uh, in debug mode, there's infinite ammo, and I'm like, you know, sometimes I'll just shoot people at the party, and I'm like, this is kind of fun. I'm like, wait, we already know that game's fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, you get one shot, uh, post who you think Chris is as the spy. You don't have to do it right away. Just watch the match, make your decision, post it. I'm sure there will be at least a couple people who get it. So are you going to shoot somebody? I am not going to shoot. I'm going to let time run, but I suggest right. being active with your missions just to make it, yeah, well, I guess. Yeah, well, six known is holy cow. Yeah, that's the like that's about, what, two missions a minute? Yeah. Something All like right. that. I'm spending forever on choose spy. Who am I going to choose? <laughs> And again, any questions about this contest, ask now, because this is your one chance. <laughs> or your chance to ask questions. I'm not going to argue about it later. When I make a decision on who won, don't fight with me yes, about it. <laughs> all decisions are final, especially yep. since you're funding it. Well, they're yeah. funding it, but they've already right. funded it. Right. Well, that's the thing, Metasite. Should you choose a conspicuous character like the general, or should you choose someone who's... Yeah, back. should I choose someone who's hard to describe in a forum post really quickly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. So, we are going to start, and... Good luck, Vine Sauce. Good luck. Go. So I am going to low-light suspected double agents and stuff. Yeah, that's fine. Whoever's messaging me on Steam, please stop. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, shit. Hey, we got to restart. I had an overlay okay. up. I'm sorry. Ah. I, had, I had one of the Spy Party overlays up. <laughs> that was totally my fault. We got to do that over. I'm, I'm the master at making really, uh, really high, t like, tense things completely anticlimactic. <laughs> so. I was doing awesome, too. Dar darn. So there you go. Sorry, guys. Thanks for the Steam message, but please don't message me on Steam. <laughs> okay. Right. Apologize. Let's take two. Take Let's two. Do it. We're gonna do it this time. This time for real. Yep. Banana bread with a vengeance. Yes. Okay. Three, two, one, go. And I assume nobody who's in the beta now should post. Correct. If you're already in the beta, don't bother. Yeah. Or if you want to play, but you don't feel like getting into the beta for whatever reason, just specify in your post. So I don't disregard it. Man, known six is brutal. Yep, <laughs> sure is. Now it's real. Now it's real. If I can get some low lights. There we go.
30 sec or 40 seconds. What's going to happen? I know who you are, but <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do. <laughs> Hopefully, I just realized I hope some people actually get it. Because <laughs> it'd be pretty funny if no one even guessed right. Oh, jeez. No! Wow. <laughs> How many missions to get done? One, two, three, I was, four, I was, five. I, I almost was done. <laughs> oh, was that your flirt target? Okay, your seduce yeah. target. It's kind of funny like, how often seduction target gets highlighted. Let's see who got it. Let me just scroll up in chat because it's probably the easiest way to tell. <laughs> um, Mr. B got it, so we got at least one winner. How did you describe S me? Subbyzilla, but he's in the beta already. Um, I haven't checked the form yet. I was just looking based on reactions. But let me check the form right now. So... Wow, it just jumped from two pages to five pages. <laughs> so it was, uh, what's that, blue suit, red tie? Yeah, dark hair. Dark hair. Um, wow, people also posted a bunch of extra questions, but I wasn't going <laughs> to check. The general camera guy, black tuxedo, black hair. Yeah, that's close. That's close, but black man, white suit. Black, bald, white suit, male. Wait, actually, black, black tuxedo, black hair. It's not actually a tuxedo. It's a suit, but uh, but the but Bondo has light hair, so they probably actually were correct. Right. Black guy, yellow suit. A lot of people thought it was a seduction target. Good. Actually, Let's I didn't see. get super sloppy until the very end, until the until the back half when I was like, oh shit, a minute left in four. A lot of people also left. said blonde hair, uh, which is interesting. Wait. Blue suit, tan pants. Isn't that your guy's? Your guy? No, I had a full dark suit. Okay. It's a blonde, white guy in blue suit. Did we get three? White male, blue suit, red tie, dark hair. That would be there Ape Salon. Go. That's one. So Ape Salon. Pale white man in a dark blue suit, dark hair. It was the very first one. The dark, the dark tuxedo, dark hair, I think qualifies. Yep. It's not yeah. a tuxedo, so there's two. Okay, so the first one that I said should qualify? I think so because there's no because uh, Bondo is the only one in a real tuxedo, but he has light hair. So I think they were right. Kind of, we're trying okay. to be clear, but it's just yeah, like I, I understand that. So yeah. that would be Ape Salon, uh, Mr. B, and who is that first guy? And Reepa, Reepa Zero. So Reepa Zero, Mr. B, and Ape Salon. Please message me on Steam. Congratulations. Wait, did Ape did Ape edit? Hang on. <laughs> Apparently, Ape Salon edited, which I said you cannot no! edit your post because it w is disqualified if you edit. Let me double check last this. Last minute disqual. Uh, Ape Salon. Yep, he edited his post. Oh, I hate no. to say. I hate to say. I did say it like three, four times. <laughs> I couldn't have been more uh, over with that. So sorry. Let's the see if anyone else got it. Black guy with black suit and bow tie. Nope. Black guy with white suit, no. Nope. Black man, yellow suit, no. Nope. Blonde and blue dress. Round man in the top hat and suit, no. Nope. <laughs> Black guy, yellow suit, African man in goldish. Blue suit, red tie, white skin. Uh, that would be him. So that'd be Mr. Tiggles. So it would be Mr. B, Tiggles, and Reepa. Message me on Steam, and we'll work out how we're going to get you into the beta. Yeah, because uh, I actually don't have gift accounts either, so we're going to have to figure out some cockamamie weirdness to actually get uh, Vinny to pay for it with the, who knows how it's going to work. I'll figure it out with, with KY, though. Wait, did... Res uh, oh, okay, never mind. I thought someone was contesting something. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much that. Tiggles posted after it was over. Oh, is that, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Shit, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Well, that's going to make things a little confusing. <laughs> yeah, do we have an exact time stamp of when it's over? Yeah, it was over by then. Okay, so Tiggles isn't in either. Um, I don't know. What do you want to do? What do you think we should do? We only have two people. Two people. Well, let's play again. You want to just play again and see if anyone gets it? Sure. Well, it's, it's, a, it's last person. Sure. First person I'll just it. make a post to separate. Right. Second match. Go. 
So we're going to get our third person one way or another. Yep. But yeah, I tried to make the swap. When I caught the swap, I, I like zoomed in on it and made it super <laughs> obvious. I was like, look, it's a one. Zoom out. Look, it's a two. So I, right when that happened, I saw a bunch of people in the chat go, oh, shit. <laughs> like, Did you I, know who it was before that? Uh, no, actually, because oh, it's okay. hard when I'm not lowlighting and highlighting. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, totally. Well, Definitely. That's the goal. All right, six known. Mark the time the match ends. I will. I will keep total track of the time that the match okay. ends. Are you synced to the forums, clockwise? Uh, yeah, I guess I am. I just made that post and it appeared one minute ago. So that's right. All right, we're good. Um, or I'll just add time until someone posts correctly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That right. would actually work. Someone would notice, but. Anyway, you ready? Yep. Let's do it. I assume that's uh If you cast. heard clicking, yeah, it's just yeah. cast. Cool. Which means you're free to do whatever you want while I'm yes. here. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, by the way. This is super oh, yeah, awesome. No, oh. I can't believe the <laughs> drama of the disqualifications and everything. Yeah. What did Flutter say? I missed it. And in the red. You didn't do banana bread and bale or anything, did you? <laughs> No, it's a legit question. I want to make sure I no. low-lighted. No, I right. did not. Okay. The Still banana good split, banana bread. As they say. The banana split, yes. That's the best. I can't remember who came up with that in the forums, but it's awesome. Not much time for six known. <laughs> Might want to add time. Yeah. Yeah, six known is definitely scary. But it's fun. Scary is fun. It's good. It's funny to not have the feedback of actually the person on to you. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea. I'm sure you know who I am at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And I think there's a couple people that caught it here as well. I'm trying to not make it too obvious that I'm, you know, because now that I know I'm biased to keep the camera on this person too. So I'm also trying to make it seem like I suspect others. Herpes caught it, but Herpes is in the beta already, I think. Now. There you go. So yeah, I caught it with uh, two things. When you picked up the blue bookshelf on your way over to the other side, you bumped into someone and stopped yeah. in your tracks. And then I've been doing that so much today. Like I, I remember there were a couple games earlier where I like hung up on a conversation. And this guy's good because he's a redhead, so it'll be very easy to get the description. Blue All right, so the match ended at about uh, 1:40 a.m. my time. So let's see what we got here. 1:40 a.m. So we're looking for, I guess, the bluish suit, light yeah, blue light suit. Blue, light, light blue suit, I think, is the main red, thing. Oh, red hair. Wait, red hair plaid suit? Nope. No. Not him. I didn't realize he was a redhead. I don't know why I thought he was. Yeah, they're brown. White red. man, blue suit, red hair. 
There you correct? go. I don't think there was anyone before that that got it. Let me just double check. Camera guy, black man, blue suit, green dress, brown coat, brown hat, <laughs> yellow suit, teal pants, dark hair, black guy, white suit, red. Yeah, Zinc got it. It was a guy named Zinc. So that was Mr. B, Zinc, and whoever the third one was. You guys message me on Steam, and we'll... Uh, I'll probably just sign you up with my PayPal that I have the money, or I'll transfer it to you, or whatever. We'll figure it out. Yeah, well, I'll just email me, and we'll or PM me, and we'll uh, we'll figure it out. I'll I'll tell you the best way to do it. Okay, sounds cool. good. So congratulations, Zinc. Congratulations, Mr. B. Congratulations, uh, Reepa. I think it was. Yep, I think that sounds right. So, awesome. That's Thanks, that. guys. Yeah, I mean, hey, thanks for doing this interview. I've been uh, watching Spy Party for a very long time, and I. Not my wildest dreams to ever think that I would be interviewing you someday. So this is great for me, and <laughs> thank awesome. you for coming. Well, thank you for playing so much. I mean, it's really awesome to have someone who plays a ton, who's better than me, <laughs> interview me. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I had a great time, and we definitely have more topics that I didn't get to hit that I wanted to. Indeed. As soon as the beta's so, open, we'll do another one. Hang on. Someone's and then I'll, I'll, have gifts. I'll have gifts at some point in the near future, too. So. Wait, hang on. Someone before... Zinc said pale blue suit. That's me. Oh, okay, so man, I guess it wasn't Zinc. I apologize, that was Sean. Oh no. But uh maybe I'll just reach into my own wallet and get ah. them both in or something. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure something out. But we'll Sean figure something out. Uh Zinc, I apologize if I jumped the gun on that, but uh we'll figure it out. Yeah, well, we'll uh, there's there are invites. We can make more invites. Yeah, absolutely. All um. right. Yeah, thanks for people for playing, too. I apologize that I can't actually give away copies yet. I just need to actually write the code that allows me to give away copies. It's like it was low on the priority list. Okay, a, non, the, a person that won, that actually won, Sean, he said he would be happy to pay for it. So maybe ah, I'll just... Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll just send invites to anybody. Yeah. And that way I can get Zinc in because uh, that was my fault for so being, crush, making a huge deal out of it and saying, yo, Zinc, yeah. <laughs> so that's what we'll do. But awesome. uh, Chris, thank you. And I yeah, definitely look you, forward to having you next time. And thank you to Vine Sauce. Even though I couldn't log on to see the chat because it would be, drive me insane while I was trying to inter answer questions, I will be back in Vine Sauce chat next time you're streaming probably and answer some questions there. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Right. Yeah, thanks. Talk to yep. you soon. Bye. Bye. So there you have it. That was an interview with Chris Hecker of Spy Party and Spore. And it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. Really fun interview. Uh, I learned so much about the game. And I hope you guys enjoyed it too. So look forward to part two of the interview after open beta kicks in a month or so, whenever it's ready. Should be very soon. So thanks again for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful night. Take care. Bye.